Infamous versus Team Secret. Game one. Infamous versus Team Secret, a matchup I don't think many people have expected to see in the top eight. No, definitely not. I mean, Team Secret, we expect to see him in top eight, but in the winner's bracket, now you have Infamous, you know, South American team don't deserve their slot coming in, and here they are in a, a do or die matchup. Yeah. Gunner, you know a lot about the South American Dota players and seeing you play against them all the time in pubs. What is it that's made Infamous so scary, so strong here at TI? They, they trust themselves like OG did last year. They are going to give. Hector is comfortable carries. They're gonna give Chris Luck his comfortable mids. They're they're playing around all each, each other really well. They play a similar style, I think, most of the games. They kind of play this four protect one, super hyper early game with their four heroes while Hector hits the jungle. Eventually, Hector's gonna stop TP into his tri camp and then he'll uh, show up to fight. Yeah, it's even a little different than four protect one, right? Because Hector is usually just on the opposite side of the map. So usually you think four protect one, like they're sitting behind him, but he's just completely somewhere else on the map while Chris Luck's running around. You're like, what the hell is this dude doing? We can't kill him. And it, it's. It's insane, because you do know what they're going to do, and teams still haven't stopped it yet. What would, what would you guys say, like, the weakness of Infamous is, or, like, how should teams be trying to approach this unique style that they're bringing to the table? I think they have some really strong picks that they're really comfortable around, and it's kind of a little night and day if they don't get their comfort heroes, like uh, the Enchantress and the Wraith King, the two biggest ones, I think, for their team. Yep. I mean, Whisper, right? Uh, people can say who invented Enchantress, whatnot, but Whisper was the one, like, one of the only people playing it in the qualifiers, and then it comes here, and all of a sudden, People said it wasn't strong in the first couple days at group yeah. stage, and then just main stage, like, oh my god, she's unkillable. I was casting CS qualifiers and would tune into NASA at yeah. the end of the day, and we're like, what are these idiots banning yeah. Enchantress for? No one's touching that hero over in Europe. These guys don't know what they're doing. And it's crazy, right? Because it's not a BKB piercing stun, but the damage, like, Enchantress destroys through the BKB because of impetus. Well, here we go. Early picks coming out. Infamous are going to get their hands on a first pick Magnus. Some of those key heroes you mentioned, Enchantress and Wraith King, both banned out, Gunner. Yeah. So they, this Magnus is going to kind of help their 4 Protect 1. It's going to let Hector farm a lot faster. He usually likes to go really greedy builds involving like Midas and Radiance yep. on these like Life Stealers and uh, Wraith Kings. These are his type of heroes. But this uh, Magnus kind of opens them more up because now he doesn't need a hero that builds Radiance. He has a built-in in power. And I love they, they pick the Void. It pretty much says, you can't pick Life Stealer here to me. Yeah. Like you, you do that, you ban out the Wraith King, and if the Life Stealer is there, I mean, the Void just chronos you. It doesn't, yeah. doesn't matter. He doesn't look as good on the non-Midas Radiance character. Yeah, exactly. Also, the scary thing about Team Seeker is in the last series, we just saw this tiny. Yeah. Just completely Ooh. carry the second game. Is Tree Volley the strongest spell in Dota right now? It's definitely top three. <laughs> I have to think of other ones, but yeah, I mean, you, you I, saw, you just get four crits in a row. Someone's dead. I, yeah. I mean, it was also used by Seeker yesterday against Maneski. It was just used in that last series. Late game, what do you do against it? It feels like on a 12-second cooldown, there's no response to Tree Volley. The, the only issue with it is like the amount of trees you have around you. But in most like, situations late game, you win the fight with one or two tree volleys and you don't care about more trees. Yep. Well, we'll see Shadow Shaman picked up second by Infamous. Not looking to jump into picking their carry just yet. No. Do you know if uh, Whisper plays Magnus? Yeah, he plays a quiet. I assume this actually is going to be the Whisper Magnus now that you have the Shadow Shaman. Because I feel like that's not a hero you want to play as five, yeah. right? So Especially more, it's a tiny. Yeah, more than likely going to be Schofield on that. and. Uh, how do you feel about three compared to four, Magnus? I like, know, say you're in a game, you're playing with your team. It kind of depends. I think uh, Magnus, the main issue when people would switch from Magnus to four was uh, the Magnus gives the enemy carry free lane. Oh. So you're kind of trading. Your carry going to be farming really heavily past like 10, 15 minutes for their carry farming heavily the first 10 minutes. Okay. So that's when people started to reinvent the hero, I think. They would start going boots in the early game. They'd start trying to do these weird cliff skewers, you know, around the bounty runes. This Magnus would walk behind them, skewering them on the cliff. And then people started to evolve that into this more tri lane Magnus with yeah. this dual lane pulling creep, so. And I I like the Magnus because a lot like Tiny, right? If it is in the four position, you have that level one kill potential. Skew under tower, toss under tower is reasonably scary. And Mag, you're like, oh, he's just an empower bot. But all it takes is one skewer and it's a first blood and the lane completely changes. Yeah. Even in RP mid game, late game, yeah. just like a one or two man can change the game. Um, yeah. As far as the Shadow Shaman, likely the fourth position, I, I feel like this is a kind of change in direction for Schofield. He's almost always been playing those more active fours as far as like Tiny, Initiate Earth fours, Spirit, yeah. Tusk. Um, and if anything, that to me is like very signature part of Infamous's playstyle. Yeah, I think maybe maybe they're like secret. They, they expect us to pick what we're comfortable with and maybe they just set something up exactly for his draft. It feels like it, like they, they have something ready. They yeah, usually plays these more melee heroes that can comfortably go into a fight, save a hero to the, the Nyx Assassin is another one of his favorites. Wow. 
So this is going to be a little change up. I think it applies more tire pressure. So he's going to be able to kind of, instead of pressuring the map for kills with initiations, he's going to be able to pressure lanes with his hero. Kind of force my rotations out. Yep. Oh, and that's a hero. I'm surprised we don't see first pick, first band like every game. After watching, I think two days ago when EG picked it as well, I want to say, I think Maneski, like, what do you, this hero just in the late game, your ulti is so strong. Yeah, having the demonic purge against whatever carry they're pairing with Magnus, it's also a way to purge off the Empower as yep. well, which is really nice. So yep. it takes away like the life stealers, the CKs, like they want to be mobile and you just get purged even through BKB. You're just sitting there and like, what do I do? Yeah. Is, I mean, there's no scenario where Infamous is not picking a melee core yeah. to go with. Yeah. There's no way. Yeah, yeah. Hector and Magnus, if they yeah. do like, oh, oh, carry Murano, what the hell? <laughs> they could pick something like uh, an Ember Spirit, which doesn't get too sad about Getting purged, obviously you sure. get sad because you lose the empower and you lose your flame guard. No. But it's playable in that matchup. And you can dodge chronos, right? You yep. want a hero that has that chance, like Nisha jumps in, you don't just get chronoed and die. You have that chance, you know, if you're quick fingers, you're out. I know Chris Luck also likes it too. It fits his oh. style of hero, I think. He likes these more melee heroes that can just go in and dive towers at seven minutes in the game. Okay. And Ember's that type of hero. Yeah, I'm looking at Silencer pick. This might be a switch up now because Whisper loves offlane Silencer. Okay. He really likes it. Do I think it's probably still the offlane Magnus? Maybe, but Whisper in the the uh, qualifiers played a ton of offlane Silencer. Wow. Would he go like greedy items like uh, Midas and drums and stuff yeah, like that? Yeah, I think he did. He went Midas, right. drums, and as well, right? Glaives go through BKB. You have another with ability eggs. that, yep, yeah, with Ags. Yeah, tons of damage. The yeah. thing I like is, like, if you jump in and go for the kill, you take away that disruption save. Like, yeah. if you jump the void, you have lockdown with Shadow Shaman with Mag RP. The issue is defensive disruption, and suddenly you can actually burst that frontline hero. We're also going to see probably here whether this Tiny's going to be a mid or a support. I think after the last series, they might kind of want this on a mid Tiny. Get it, the farm early, yeah. get yeah. that Ags, yeah. and all of a sudden, yeah, 20 minutes in, you're doing it, 1k crits. And as far as Secret go, one of the players that uh, I think has received a flak is mid one. He's looked kind of rough yep. this tournament, Definitely. but Tiny was the hero in that game through Decided where he really stepped it up and played some good Dota, so. Yeah, yeah after that game, I think their team's going to feel a little more confidence. As, as I said, they didn't look super happy about their wins, but I think mid one, after that game, he was kind of owning the whole game. Like, he carried the first, you know, 10, 15 minutes uh, with his rotations, so I think you know, giving him that hero that he felt comfortable with uh, is going to, you know, boost up his confidence yeah. for the series. Tiny mid doesn't have too many bad matchups either, would you say? Or what not, would be the bad ones? Uh, nothing really stands out to you. It's more like the the ranged heroes that get tankier, which there aren't that many these days. They're, the only, like, ranged heroes are, like, the Lina's and, like, probably the scariest is OD, I think. Okay. Well, play, playing OD versus the Void wouldn't be too bad of an idea as well, yeah. I feel. Ooh, and that's a... A hero I, I just almost forgot about because it's been first picked <laughs> almost every time. And now you've got the, the easy setup with a Shadow Demon. And that's not fun to play against. You get disrupted. You never know where the arrow's coming from. You're just guaranteed dead almost. Arrows into Chrono. Yapsor yeah. Morana has been played a lot during this TI9. So I expect it to be in his hand. So yeah. we will see the tiny core, whether it's mid or offlane. That is flexible, I would say. It could be a sub, uh, core bottom as well. That's true. Yeah. So uh, EG yesterday, right? They had the tiny that, and it was like S4 tiny Sumail Morana, yeah. which was odd. But I agree. I think you put this Morana on four. Yeah. At the same time, though, you'd kind of want this Mirana to lane with the Shattered Demon if possible. That's true. Because you want to try to get these early game disruptions into arrows. Uh, they could even try lane it with the Void for the first level or two, and then he can rotate to the offlane to kind of protect him. Yeah. Because Void doesn't come back very easily, so yeah. I definitely think you want to bring him a good lane. Especially since the other carry is going to have a power. Yeah. So this Void who has no built-in, you know, passive gold way to get gold, like he doesn't have Grievel's Greed, he has no Cleave built-in, Battle Fury is kind of bad on him. The best is the Maelstrom. But even then, he doesn't really farm that fast. So it's going to be a little scary if Infamous picks some, you know, Jug or this hero that can farm really quickly. Yeah, that's got to be what they're looking for with one of these two picks. Oh, my. A PL. So I, I watched Infamous play PL in the group stage. I think they were it was like the second PL game of the tournament. The first one, PL got completely crushed. Yeah. At, but in the Infamous PL game, Hector carried. At the end of the game, like 10, 2, and 7. He completely free farmed. He, the the reason they picked it in that game was for the Mirana. They lane the peel versus the Mirana Shadow Demon, yeah. and if he gets disrupted, he's able to doppel lock out. Yeah, and if his support gets disrupted. He doppel locks and puts an illusion in front of the arrow to tank the arrow for him. And it's nice, you talked about Ember, right? PL also, if the, the Void goes on you, you have a way to dodge the Chrono, which is always nice, because you're just going to die if you get chrono Or they don't even know which one's the real one. Yeah. And playing Void without BKB versus, like, Diffusal Manta, you very quickly lose your entire mana pool, so... 
that's going to be a tough situation for Secret if uh, you get any stuns or lockdown, burn through the Void's mana pool. Yeah, and it's not even, I mean, right, you wanted a hero who's decent versus Shadow Demon, whether it's a five, whether it's a four, like, you don't want to be picking these Svens who just get kited the whole time, and PL does a lot better against that. Yeah. The issue is, is that if he ever gets an illusion, the Shadow Demon's going to also have a kind Yeah, of a that's illusion not army. fun, exactly. Yeah. He's going to be, you know, 10 FPS, 30 PL illusions, oh, 15 no. on each side. <laughs> Help me. To do. I, I kind of want to ask, like, what are the last picks for Secret to do with PL? But they've also already got Tiny. Like, Tiny's no, a decent bad, yeah. answer, wouldn't you say? Yeah, it's pretty good. The Void as well, if he gets late game, he is going to usually have a Maelstrom. If he really wants to be greedy, he can go the Battle Fury, which will help him scale a little more versus the PL. But Late game, whenever he crones the real PL, it doesn't matter about the illusions. You just yep. kill the real PL and the fight's over. So I'm gonna look for, I think still the Ember is probably one of the top picks for Infamous right now. It kind of fits your play style, it works really well with the Magnus. But it does set up a couple team secret heroes. Yeah. The it last sets time up the the OD, I think. Oh sure. Yeah, yeah. I was gonna say the last time Infamous had the Magnus X here in a Monkey King mid as mm. well. That's something we could see at for Chris Lock. And that gives you a little bit more team fight, right? Like right now, I look at Team Secret, you have a tiny and a void, like you have the team fight. On the other side, you've got a Magnus, which is great, but you don't really see these Magnuses going in. He's more of a counter initiate hero now. And I mean this TI, it feels like you get 30 plus minutes, you want the better team fight nowadays. I'd be a little scared of Monkey because he does have some hard lane matchups in the game. Uh, so if they pick it now, Team Seeker, I think, still have the ability to flex. Yeah. This Tiny to a three, the bottom to a four, Shadow to a five, kind of run a tri lane, help the Tiny a little, and then, you know, they'll give mid one this favorable matchup. Yesterday, yeah. I think we talked a lot about giving mid one a favorable matchup, and they weren't really able yeah. to do it in the Mineski series. So his laning stage was. You know, it was really hard for him, I think. But in this game, if he does get a Whoa, Ooh. whoa, whoa! <laughs> First Ricky of the tournament has what? just come out. So so back in the NA scene, before Let's hear I left it. the TI, everyone started playing Ricky mid. Yeah. Everyone was saying it was the cool new thing. You have a lot of new HP regen. You have 5 HP at level one, yeah. right? Yeah. So the hero, the backstab works on denies. So he kind of tries to get the maximum amount of CS. You know, it's like the old Kanka, where you'd be able to get every deny and every last hit. And it kind of owns these low armor range heroes. Like, I played a Voc Invoker versus it the other day, and I got completely destroyed. Last pick, Earthshaker. Wow. But yeah, it's really okay. So Ricky mid is what you're Ricky, it you're is, thinking. It will be Chris a Ricky Luck, mid. Yes. he's a Ricky mid player. Yes. Oh boy, this is going Spicy. to be some spicy. And the thing is, game. it could be an Earthshaker middle as well, right? I think yes. that actually deals very well with. Uh, we don't know. It. Did he? Mid yeah. Did play it. Oh man. I'm Whoa. excited. We have got a last pick What's Ricky happened? into Shaker. Ricky is definitely the talk of the scene right now. But before we get our drop, I want to hear what Purge has to say about these two drops. It's a very cool draft from Team Seeker. What they did was they, in their first phase of bans, they banned out all of the comfort heroes for Infamous. And that's very, very effective to do against a team that isn't as uh, normalized in the pro scene. They might be going for heroes that they feel comfortable with. So when you ban those out, it's going to put them on the back foot a little bit. And on the other side, Secret also got probably the most contested heroes in the patch right now, core-wise, with Tiny, who can abuse his Aghanim Scepter, and Void, who can Chronosphere to combo that is extremely well. So you can use these two teamfight heroes and gank heroes to get tons of kills in the early mid-game. But on the other side, Infamous does have the benefits of having Mag RP. They've also got the PL, which is going to be effective against Samurana, another really, really strong laning here that Secret got. So from my perspective, it seems like Secret got almost all of the best heroes in the current meta, uh, according to this tournament so far. And on the other side, Infamous is going to do some typical wacky stuff, but with new heroes. So it's going to be an amazing match. Let's toss it over to the casters. Heavy is the head that wears the crown, and Secret have been wearing the crown all year long. But here at the International, they have been put to the test. And here in the lower bracket, they're going to have to match up against every young team that wants to be able to build their legacy, cement their immortality by bringing down the king. First, it was Mineski, which Secret barely managed to eke out a win against, and now it's going to be Infamous, another underdog team that has probably built up even more steam than Mineski has. Infamous is such a surprise, just because I think any betting man would have had them in the bottom two, and that would have been one of the more comfortable bets that you would have made at TI. That would have been not a guarantee, but very near a guarantee. And the fact that they're top eight, and they're in a position to knock out Secret is incredible. And Secret... I, everyone is waiting to knock them off. You just have contender after contender coming after that crown. Even though OG are the defending champions, being the top of the DPC means you have the most attention on you. 
Exactly. They're the ones who are favored to be able to win this international, no matter what the results have said so far. And Secret did exactly what you would, what a lot of us talked about when facing up against Infants. Why are teams giving them the Wraith King? Why are teams giving them this like Schofield Tiny, stuff like this? Just stop letting that happen ban away their favorite heroes, and Infamous, they have the opportunity to be able to show that they are not just a one-hit wonder, that they have depth to them, and they have something up their sleeve, and that's gonna be the mid lane Chris Luck Riki, a hero that has not been picked or banned yet in the international until now. And you're talking about depth. If you can win a game with Ricky on the main stage against Team Secret, we can definitely say that you've got depth to your team. <laughs> Absolutely. It's definitely going to be something that Secret may not be totally familiar oh, with. Oh, did you see that, by the way? Schofield dropped all of his items in front of Puppy. Uh, oh. Uh, if Puppy just levels uh, Disruption there and he's quick enough, yeah. if he anticipated that Schofield was going to do that, uh, Schofield would just be starting with nothing right now. He dropped his boots on the ground first in front of Puppy, trying to bait him out. And this is something that makes his team so cool and unique. How many players are willing to risk this much money, this much placement? On oh, stuff like that? oh, an early toss up in the top lane, Schofield. It's into the range of the tower. Fortunately, Puppy with only shadow points and can't really stall up Schofield, so not gonna have our first blood. But uh, Secret are trying to get a certain set of lanes right now by swapping things around. Is it because they want the mag uh, versus Void matchup? They want that one-on-one? -on -one? I think so. It's a really good one-on-one -on -one for him. Plus, I, it's not easy for Mag to be in a position where you're dual laning against the Tiny plus the Shadow Demon. You're yeah. just going to get pure denied. Whereas one-on-one -on -one matchup, you're perfectly fine. Plus top lane, I think he's going to win. I feel like they have a lot of harass potential and they can easily secure Hector's farm in this game. Our mid lane matchup is definitely going to be the most interesting first. Puppy, no, he's going to be fine. And I've never seen silence. In professional Dota, I don't think I've seen Earthshaker versus Ricky mid. And I think this might be a first for me. I'm pretty certain that Earthshaker is one of the few heroes that can really deal with the backstab damage. Comes to the Ricky, the arrow comes out, and that is going to be your first blood on Stinger. They try and turn things around by killing Schofield Puppy, but now Schofield has overextended himself trying to trade off kills, and he's going to be slowly whittled away by Yapsor. As Schofield, the Shadow Shaman, it has a bit of a slower base movement speed. So the boots versus boots right now is going to be the favor of Yapsor, but doesn't really feel like chasing oh, that DD far. Runa top. Chris Luck is going to make his lane a little bit easier here. Mid one going to pop the cell. He is taking a decent amount of harass and he's going to take a little bit more here. Mid one probably doesn't want to trade up against this Ricky. Who's going to deny so many of these creeps. This is why Ricky mid has some potential. So one of the big benefits of Ricky core, right, is that cloak and dagger. Is the fact that you have this, uh, this agility damage multiplier that allows you to be able to do a lot more damage when, when it comes to getting CS, both the last hits as well as the denies. Opening that, that uh, a lot of CS open to you that normally wouldn't be. But in this situation, it's matched up against an Earthshaker who also has the same kind of ability. Top lane, Hector, Hector. Gang low. He's going to be chased into the trees. The arrow lands from Yapsor. That's going to be a second kill for Secret. Make it a third now. Is they're going to be able to disrupt Stinger, perhaps, and bring him down. But Zai is actually a little bit too low. No mana. If anything, Poppy has to be careful. Schofield's really gunning for him right now. Ether Shock needed another swing or two to be able to finish him off. But they do at least bring down the carry of Infamous. 2-0 early kill lead. Right now, no team too far ahead as Infamous and Secret are nearly identical when it comes to the net worth, despite that. Oh, he tossed, but it was an illusion that he actually got, and as a result, he's going to be shackled up and finished off by Hector. And that's minus two. Permanent loss. Try not to think about it too much, but it's always there. And especially on a hero like Tiny, who already has a slow... Uh, and small base in pool. Plus, you're not gonna go for treads that much anymore. A lot of people have been opting for the phase boots on pretty much every strength core, uh, which means you don't have that option of strength to in switching on your treads. Regen rune picked up by the Magnus, still doing okay against the Void. 
Whisper actually ran down to the bottom rune, and he was rewarded. He actually got a regen, so he refilled his bottle and had some regeneration. Some time lost in lane sucks, but it was honestly probably the best rune that he could get in that situation. I think he may have made a miscalculation by going for the two levels of the shockwave, just because Void Top. Oh, they are going to be able to bring down Schofield. Now Singer's in trouble. Yapsor leaping forward. And with the poison, Fairy Fire going up, but Singer can't get to the trees fast enough. Yapsor gets the double kill. And Yapsor is making this lane hell right now for Infamous. A lot of arrows, good movement overall. Mid lane, Chris Luck getting quite low, but... You could see it in this, yes. This is not a 1v1 matchup. This Riki is really dumpstering, which I think they were hoping for. They're gonna land another arrow, this time Schofield is going to be the one to fall as Secret Invade going for those bounty runes. Now Zion's going to be a bit low, but Hector running out of man now going to be disrupted as well. They just do not seem to be able to contest this tri lane. And the other two solo lanes are going perfectly fine for Secret. On top of that, Stinger was forced to pick up two of the Sentry Wards to try to help his Ricky mid, but mid one's not buying any. He doesn't really care about this Invis Ricky in his lane. Every single time uh, Chris Luck shows up, mid one just fights him because Earthshaker has those kind of good base stats. He's able to hit him every once in a while with the Aftershock. The Enchant Totem allows him to be able to contest for uh, like range creeps that Chris Luck would usually be able to get the deny on against other 1v1 matchups. And Schofield's made his way mid, but he's got to be careful too. Mid one is level six. Gonna fight over this room. Try and jump a mid one. He does have his level six. It's gonna be a little There's precarious the for Infamous and the arrow as well. Oh, they do have the smoke screen, but that's enough. Enough to stop Schofield from falling. Not sure what Infamous really was planning out there. Yeah, I'm not really sure what the uh, end goal of that play is. Considering it's an Earthshaker, he's just stronger than you right now. Your Ricky's not level six. And maybe the cracks are beginning to show Infamous drafting some heroes that they haven't played as much in the group station, even the playoffs. And as a result, just look a little unpracticed with what to do. Give them a little bit of leeway because I mean, this team catches up through farm real quick, Cap. Really, really quick. Plus, they have a Magnus, one of the heroes that they're better with. Whisper's got a one-on-one -on -one solo lane, so he's going to pick up levels pretty easily. That is true. Like, we've got some... We've got two different agility cores that have pretty good agility stats, uh, especially the Phantom Lancer, right? His agility game is off the, off the charts. That Empower is really going to start kicking in in the mid game. Yeah. And Earthshaker's good against you until a point. Then there are ways to work around it. It's really hard for him to know which the real PL is. Oh, Top toss lane. up, Hector. Does have the Doppelganger. Stun by the Avalanche is going to be able to hit all of them. Which one is the real one? They've sniffed it out, but they won't be able to get the kill. Bottom lane, Skewer in, RP being used, and they will be able to get the kill on Nisha. A sneaky rotation from Schofield, and finally, Infamous, they get an opening, they get a kill that is not a trade. And it's a kill on a core that's had solo XP, so this is gonna boost up everybody that was a part of that. Uh, Nisha on his way to the Midas. Anytime you die, getting that close to Midas, it feels so bad, Cap. Yeah. It slows down your timing, your rhythm. It feels like you're being punished for your greed. I think he decided to go for it because most voids do, but also it didn't feel like anybody was going to try to go for the gank on such a high level void. And he's got two levels of time walk. But with the arcane rune, he was willing to pop the RP there. And mid one's going to grab the invis rune. Might opt to start making some rotations around the map as mid lane has been so free for him. Hector. One of the biggest things that everybody's been praising him for, especially pro players, is his proficiency at farming. And most of the time it's been on that Wraith King or Life Stealer, but here it's on a Phantom Lancer, which could be the hardest carry of the three. But we haven't seen a whole lot of Phantom Lancer. Why is that, Blitz? What, what uh, caused this hero to fall from the meta? I feel like he's just too slow. Uh, his teamfight potential really requires him to hit so many different item timings. There aren't a lot of carries nowadays where I feel like you have to wait for three different items before they feel viable with fighting. Yeah. And Phantom Lancer, part of the problem is you have carries like uh, Tiny that just get one item. You get an Echo Saber, you feel yep. pretty good about fighting. Then his next item leads into the Aghanim Scepter and you're even better. Whereas Phantom Lancer, you get a Diffusal, still not good at fighting. You need one more item, you get Manta, you're still squishy. You have to keep building upon your farm. Uh, and in this meta, it feels like everybody is so fast. Yeah. Even Faceless Void is considered a slower hero, 
But the one thing is, you come with the best team fight in the game in Chronosphere. It can always save your ass, regardless of what position you are. Uh, and I feel like heroes like Void, heroes like Wraith King are just good because it's easy for your team to play around. Everyone knows the kind of playstyle that you want to exhibit. Whereas Phantom Lancer, his timings and how it's so he's weird. able to be in a team fight, it's a little, it's a little different. There isn't those obvious team fight wins. There isn't those obvious timings. It's more about the uh, the other four of Infamous being able to basically win fights and provide openings for Hector to then clean up with his diffuse flight, with all the chase down that Phantom Rush gives you. We're going to see a heavy rotation coming out from Secret for the 10 minute bounty runes. Will Infamous do the same on the other side of the map? But By the Isha way, does grab one of them. So. Quick thing uh, to notice is that. One of the best ways to deal with Ricky, of course, is going to be the Force Staff. And as a core player, you don't love building it as one of your first items. But if you just take a look at Yapsor, because of the uh, sheer amount of kills he's gotten, and he's got pretty good farm to go along with it, he almost has it in its entirety. That's pretty crazy, especially since mid one is going straight for the Aghanim Scepter. You would think that the smoke screen is going to be a good counter to him, but if he can rely on Yapsor to get him out of that silence. This will be a very effective core pickup. Whisper is going to make a rotation over here. He's empowering up Hector. But what else are we doing? Are we trying to make a play to defend top? Is that Siege Wagon already dealing so much damage? Mid lane, they're going to go for it. Mid one, he's definitely in trouble here with the combo of the Shackles, Wards, and the ult coming out from Chris Luck. He time walked into the smoke cloud, so wasn't able to instantly pop the chrono, which allows Chris Luck to reset. Get back into the fight. Puppy getting chased right now. You should know about this. What I really like about Secret is they place a sentry to go along with every one of their wards. Yeah. He saw that at the bottom lane. That's how Nisha knew that Chris Luck was coming. Uh, the downside of this, though, Cap, is it's going to really slow down everyone's farm. Puppy is used to being a slightly 3D or 5. You're not going to get away with it in this game where you're buying so many different sentries. Chris Luck is just trying to find openings anywhere he can. The power, and he's going to try and go for Yapsor here, but Double Leaps gets him away. And they're smoked up right now on the side of know. Infamous. They want to make the rotation up the top lane, but the tower's already dead. If they could kill mid one, that'd probably be the biggest kill that they could go for, but he does have a haste rune, so they'd have to lock him down nearly perfectly. They're hoping he walks onto the high ground here. Maybe if he gets onto the low ground, Skullfield's waiting. Whisper has the RP. Gonna be able to open with the Hex. They have the follow-up Shackles. No need for RP here. They can hold that ultimate for Whisper. A big kill on mid one. As he just gets a, a bit sloppy. I was really concerned for Infamous there. It just seemed uh, like they didn't know what they were doing around the map. Three man smoke up where Chris Luck goes bottom. They lose the tower top, but being rewarded with a core kill makes this a little bit better for them. Walking up hills with no vision is the easiest way to die. Through. That is 10 times out of 10, you will get punished for that at yep. this level. Uh, Infamous is definitely good enough to take advantage of that fact. Mid one just a little bit too cocky. Uh, but I'd like to see some sort of tower pressure right now from Secret, aside from that top lane. Yeah. Take this bottom one, rotate around to your Chronosphere. The downside uh, of making that move, though, is that Nisha doesn't really have any items that can really fight yet. He has no damage dealing, so somebody else has to come, which is exactly why Zai's down here. I mean, it's pretty crazy. They don't really have a clear tower pusher, right? It's like maybe Zai can throw some damage into the tower, and yet Secret has still managed to take one tier one, and they've done a fair amount of chip damage in that mid lane as well. Nisha was really trying to push that. Yeah, I mean, like you said, Tiny's pretty good, but I feel like Secret's philosophy throughout the year is you don't have to have these tower pushers. As long as we, you can just kill them enough and get map control, it's okay. Yeah. Towers will naturally fall because uh, the best way and the easiest way to clear towers is if you can skip the wave and put all the creeps onto it. Puppy top. Does manage to get off the disruption. That should be enough for Puppy to get away. Chris Luck. It, it just really shows. When Ariki is trying to move around the map, trying to get these kills without his defusal blade, without any sort of slow, the smoke screen just isn't good enough. Stinger is going to be caught here as he tried to just collect a little bit of the golden experience flowing in on the tower push. Yeah, we talked about this bottom tower push. This is exactly what they needed to do. Even if you don't have the easiest ways to set that up, Whisper mid lane, going to go on a mid one. The wards have been dropped too. Shackles to follow up. Chris Luck with the blink strike. And that'll nab a kill for them. Unfortunately, without the wards, won't be able to put any pressure. And Whisper is, in fact, stuck yeah. and has no way to get out. He doesn't have a TP. 
no phase boots, and he's just gonna have to hold this position. They should TP and kill him here, Cap. Yeah, 25 seconds, a skewer's up in two, the arrow's gonna it's nail gonna him. Hit. He does have the skewer up, but Zion's gonna go for the back line, tossing him into the Serpent Ward trap. He's gonna be shackled up, though, and the Global Sands will actually protect Infamous very nicely. Zai, though, is still gonna die from the tricks of the trade. How did that go well for Infamous? I think Secret just got a little bit greedy about it, but Global Silence was honestly just perfect. It was, and Whisper, I mean, he wasn't meaning to bait there, but it works out for them in their favor. Yeah. Uh, six to seven, most of the gold lead coming from the towers that they were able to grab early on. And Chris Luck during this entire time. One thing about Infamous that really stands out is one of their two cores is Dyer's always farming. Is yes. <laughs> And this game, it's going to be Hector, while Chris Luck is the one trying to move oh, around the map, make plays, but he's going to get chains done here. Shouldn't be able to get off the smoke screen or the tricks of the trade. They're going to use the Echo Slam to make sure he has no chance of living. And they know that Stinger's in this area because of the ward. Mid one going to run into him. This should be an easy kill, Stinger. Doesn't even have oh, boots right now. Oh, and the bottom lane as well, leading into the arrow. But Hector shows his face. They're not going to be able to get that kill back over the top lane where Stinger, I honestly just don't think there's a way for him to survive. No matter how much he jukes this, a Fissure and some Shadow Poisons is going to be enough. 6-9, Team Secret up by just a K. Chronos here, just, it's strong, of course, but without any damage items when you go for this Midas build, you'll have levels, so you'll have level 2 Chrono but Radiance you literally don't have any attack speed. Yeah. You need Maelstrom, you need Mjolnir. That is something that did kind of strike me about Secret's lineup. They don't have the obvious big nukes to throw into the Chronosphere early. Later on, you know, if they, they oh, start getting double Star Storm, they get the tree volley, tree then it's volley. insane. But early on, you don't have the Dyer's absolute greatest. Most of the time, it's just going to be set up for an arrow, maybe some Shadow Poisons. Oftentimes, that'll be enough, and Infamous don't yeah. have that easy save. What this game... I think will come down to is not really even the farm, but it's the initiation. If Secret take a good fight, they're the ones that started. They can just snap one or two heroes to begin with. I think that infamous. Oh, the long range hex managed to catch him. Another surfer wards. The shackles going out. The tricks. The trade, but it's just not gonna last long enough. And last, no. Nisha does manage to get the time walk away. They gonna still try and chase him down. Chris Luck thinking about it, but that time dilation slowing him down. And that's three times that they've gone for it. Side so looking around the area. He does have a blink dagger. I do like how Schofield's using his wards just yeah. aggressively to grab kills. Doesn't really care about the cooldown very much. It doesn't even feel like they care about towers all that much. This top pressure is the first time we've really seen them try to do something about it. Yeah, Hector's like, I guess with Manta, I'm finally strong enough that I'm not scared of uh, any sort of solo kill. But even then, he's really not trying to push it too much. He could be there swinging at the tower instead. He's trying to hit neutrals while most of Secret showing mid. I think Secret have realized, uh, as bad as we are at potentially taking fights or taking towers, Infamous is even worse right now. Yes. And that's why they're just been aggressively hunting for a lot of the game, a lot of four manning. The Moonlight Shadow is they're going to try and get into the high ground. Puppy drops sentry, but they've already jumped on Anisha. This is a fantastic kill if they can get it with the Global Silence. It's going to be good enough. The four staff save is not there. Midwatch jumping forward with that Aghanim Scepter is going to be able to hit Schofield to finish him off with the Enchant Totem Swing. Chris Luck looking for his opening, but Hector's in trouble. They need to be able to bail him out, but he does manage to get the doppelganger into low ground. Sai wasn't able to catch him. A buyback from Schofield. They're going to try and chase down some of these heroes, and the buyback does result in at least one kill. Here's Puppy. His TP is going to get canceled. Whisper is going to use the RP to be able to grab Sai. He skewers him back into Stinger. They just want to make sure they have the damage that Sai's not going to be able to get away to Blink Dagger, and they can give this kill to Hector as well. They gave it to Puppy. Oh, Stinger takes that last hit instead, but still. Infamous between taking away intelligence, between getting Hector these kills, he's now top net worth by a largely 10k. Ooh, he's already hit that 10k mark in 18 minutes. And this is the dangerous part is, Hector will get his. Regardless of what the situation is, dying at top lane, Hector will get his, and maybe we finally see some sort of tower pressure. They do have the wards. And for a brief second, we saw Infamous finally take a gold lead. These guys, and they came to play today. And the first Serpent Wards for a tower as well. It's always been used to try and get a kill, but mid tower being all important here. Schofield gets the last hit, and finally, I'm okay with Singer getting the kill because he needed boots. My man, 18 <laughs> minutes in, just picked oh, up a pair. No. If you conversely look at Puppy, I mean, he's a literal prince compared to Stinger. He's got two bracers and a magic wand. Yeah, you said Puppy was going to be the poor one because he has to buy so many sentries, but somehow Stinger ends up even poorer.
Yeah, Stinger, uh, his luxury item right now is that Windlace. Wow. But he's had to buy just as many sentries to combat the fact that Puppy's pot. Die. Oh, oh he's gonna, gonna find him. Let's go feel fast enough. He's gonna be able to get the hex before the blink. What a massive kill, and that's all thanks to that Observer Ward in lane. They saw Zai run through the lane, go into the trees, and they hunted him down as a result. So we're going to go back and take a look at that team fight. Schofield with the buyback here. Because of that, Disable is able to stop Puppy from TPing out. Bottom lane. Oh, we go back into it. It's now with the global silence. Yaptor, he's done. They're going to look at Puppy as well. Tricks to the trade being used right as Nisha was hoping for the Chronosphere. Puppy, he's almost dead here. But they chant Totem jump in for mid one. Looking to be able to finish up Chris Lung, but he heals. He got the magic stick. Is that going to be enough? The smoke screen. He gets the swing. He gets and the, the Chronosphere. Kill. Chronosphere going out to finish off Schofield as well. Doesn't want to deal with those Disables. During that and time, look at Hector from Top. Infamous is actually coming over here because Hector. He's trying to hit a tier three right now. Singer's just buying him time. Go, Hector, go. I've got this. 2K gold lead still for Infamous because they took the tower secret. They've got to put pressure on this tower, but they feel a little bit worried because they don't have Chronos here. They're just going to back up completely, let things go. They do get three kills, but it does cost them a tier two tower. They don't get a tower trade in return, but. I think for Secret, they're happy about things. Yeah. Being even in a game like this against a team that wants to farm, you still have the better team fight, I feel like. Yeah. With Earthshaker, with Chronosphere, I think your ways of setting up team fight are easier anyways. I'll agree with that. If Infamous don't make a good fight happen in the next minute and a half. Okay. They did use Chronosphere. They did use Echo Slam. We still have RP up for This would be a really good time to smoke. If anything, Infamous should go fight right now. If what Chris Luck did know is he was actually outside of the sentry range, and then he walked back into it. Damn. He was confused. Yeah. You just never know with Oh, they did go for the smoke. Okay. All right, so this is what we wanted out of them because I mean, the timing of it works out so nicely. Yep. If you can get this kill, you will get a free Roche. They if know you can they get have a core kill. A solid 45 seconds until Echo and Chronosphere. They don't have global silence, but they have confidence. Oh, there it is. Oh, okay. I Maybe mean, this is a cooler play. Instead of trying to force the fight with just off of an RP, trying Trust to go for Roche, this is not going to work. Secret is a wily team. Yapsor already fired the arrow into here. They've committed, though. And they saw the Serpent Ward pop Zai. Going to blink shadow. in any second. He's going to throw in. What about the smoke screen, though? They need that out in place to make sure. Oh, Chris Luck is actually going to jump forward to make sure they can't actually get inside the pit. But mid one and Isha, they're going to come through the right. Drives them in. Field doesn't actually die yet with the dragon for the Whisper. He gets tossed up in the air straight on the Seeker. But Nectar, he's finished off Roshan now with the Aegis. He's going to try and finish off this fight. Big one. He does have the Echo Slam. They have to be careful of it. He does manage to get that off and jumps away just in time before he's burned out of mana. Nisha now goes for the Chronosphere. He sees that Chris Luck is inside the pit and he should be able to swing him down. Hector, though, the Global Silence going off, surrounding Zai, who's burned out of mana, has no hope to be able to survive through this. Mid one lays out the Fisher form, but Infamous feeling the fight. They got the Roshan. It worked for them. A three for two trade and the buyback from Puppy. They did lose their mid Ricky, but they get the bigger objective, Hector, who grabs that Aegis, and he is so incredibly farmed. He has almost a heart. He's got a fully completed Manta and a Diffusal. We talked about how this hero could be a little bit slower in its build-up timing, because you're not looking for the one item timing, not even the two, but you need three items on this hero to feel comfortable. And he's almost got it at the 23 minute mark. Yeah, we're almost there. And that's where maybe some of the damage problems are gonna come up. But Chronosphere may not be enough to finish off Hector anymore. Blitz, you said something I think that was really smart this morning. You were talking about the synergy between cores. You said you named a lot of teams that just had it. Mineski had it. You say Infamous has it between Chris Luck and Hector. What is that synergy? I feel like they know where the other person wants to be. Part of being a good one and two combo, and I feel like that's what makes OG so potent. You saw it in the interview yesterday where Casey said, how do you feel about Anna coming back? He said, I love Anna. He's my favorite player ever. Is top. This is going to be a free kill for them. Nisha, oh, a pretty big one shackle. attack. This is massive. They need another smoke screen with a level 15 talent. He's got it. And it feels like they know how to create space for each other. They always play on opposite ends of the map. Yep. It feels like Infamous, their one and two positions have an understanding of how they want to work. Absolutely. You can see the oh, Hector. Stop it. The captain of Team Secret giving Doe behind his tier three. But Zai does manage to make an entrance through the back. But 
He's just been skewered in into Hector. He's gonna get burned out of his mana so quickly, but mid one. What an entrance from him with that enchant totem. Arrow nice arrow. Nailing out the uh, Magnus as well. He's finished off by a toss that comes out from Zai on the right hand side. He's now been burned out of mana entirely though. The Moonlight Shadow protecting him. The smoke screen though is enough to be able to finish off Yapsor and Zai. And uh and mid one will back away, giving up this tier two tower. They did get some out of that as they forced two buybacks. Two heroes dead, so this is going to be a two for three, but they might just go and push this. Top lane is pushing at the same time. You see that Schofield's going for the play. He's hoping that nobody comes in, drops the wards. Tier three being assaulted on both sides of the map. Secret have to decide. They decide to go for Schofield, but this also means the bottom lane likely to lose its tier three. Secret, they're in shambles right now. They're not quite sure where to go. Nisha has the Chrono Sphere. He's gonna need a beauty here to be able to help stop this push. Hector's actually gonna jump forward, trying to get Puppy here for the avalanche. Surrounding him, he does have the extra life though, and maybe that's why he's just so fearless right now. They do manage to get a smoke screen on Denisha, but Hector looking to be able to finish off Puppy. The global sounds going down right as the enchant totem swing. But mid one, not able to finish off that Phantom Lancer. Hector's giving Chrono it Sphere. away, but now the Chrono Sphere goes out. They're looking to be able to bring down this Phantom Lancer. He does have the Aegis, though. Stinger's gonna die inside the Chrono as well. They use the arrow, though. Do they have the chain stun? He's gonna be able to jump away instantly with a doppelganger. The RP, the RP, inside of the tricks of the train. Mid one trying to bail him out with the Echo Slam. He does it. He managed to finish off one. Chris Luck almost dead with the BKB. He can't get out. He's dead as well. Infamous drop three. And secret. They will manage to hold on to their melee barracks. Took heavy damage at that top lane, but a great fight for them overall. They only lose the range racks. At Secret, it feels like comes online when they lose racks. Yes. It's like they're okay with that idea uh -huh. as long as they're winning team fights. Nowadays, it does feel like if you're getting wiped repeatedly trying to take megas, it doesn't necessarily feel worth it. That's not a game ending situation anymore. Infamous just as easily in that situation could have taken the tier three and backed up and gone shot. Yes, but instead they decided to stick around. They felt their strength. It was just such an awkward fight because they don't have the vision advantage going up into that. And Secret, their veteran team, they understood that was a great fight for them to take. You saw that fast blink from Schofield dodging the Fisher of mid one here. You could see how how just far. Hector dove in so deep, all the way into the tier fours to try and finish off that Shatter Look demon. This top right now, Schofield's got blink and Aether Lens. He's gonna see Absorb. This should be a free kill for him. Hector's gonna come in now. Ward's even dropped for this. Despite the four staff and trying to contend with the Riki core, it's really the Shadow Shaman that has been Yapsor's worst enemy. <laughs> Now look at that, 82% win probability. <laughs> Blitz, if you told me there was an 82% chance that Infamous would be bringing down Team Secret Why, for a top six <laughs> position <laughs> before this international, before, yes. I would have said that's absolutely crazy. But going into this series, it I, felt like a 50-50 matchup. Yeah, I think this is a straight coin flip, especially with how uh, mortal Secret has looked in yep. the last few series. This is not the dominant team that we saw. You can see the cracks. You can see they're not playing with that same bravado and confidence that we saw all throughout the year where they said, we're the best team in the world. Come at us. But keep in mind, gold leads mean nothing to this team. Yeah. Counting them out or waxing poetic about how good Infamous is doing doesn't matter. We can talk about how good Mineski did. Maybe you'll say they outplayed Secret for 85% of the game. But when it mattered, Secret moved on. 2-1, yes. that's the only result anyone will care about. It doesn't matter that Infamous had a 3, 4k gold lead with an Aegis. Secret can just bust out a win. Yeah, believe me, you tell those Mineski players right now, hey, you guys did a great job. You outplayed Secret a lot of the game. It's not going to make them feel any better about the fact that in the end, they were out of the international. 19 yeah. to 20, 28 minutes in. Infamous only holding a 1,000 gold lead. But specifically, Hector holds a 5,000 net worth lead over the second carry in the game. That's Nisha's Faceless Void. I will say, though, having a net worth on this Earthshaker is so important because Ricky is, I think, the type of core that needs to continue to scale quite high. Yes, yeah. Earthshaker's damage as a core is really nice. It's really easy to get off because of the Acceptor. And even more so now that he's got this BKB, there's only one real way to control him up. That's the RP. Unfortunately, this Empower does allow the Riki. Most of the time, he has issues where he's not running around getting kills. He's a little slow at farming. The Empower actually helps him out quite a lot. He now gets his level 18 as a result. And his biggest problem is, massive level as well. is that you have to melee jump in and you don't have a disable as a core. Yeah. 
and you're really squishy. Yeah. You will die really quickly as this Ricky. He's got good armor, but I mean, take a look. He's got a BKB, a lot of stat items, and only rocks 1500 health. Yeah, just one echo slam, one toss avalanche. Hey, we saw him pop the BKB, and they just killed him. Yep. A 1,500 HP BKB does not feel good. He's trying to get the Basher right now. I wonder if uh, I wonder if an Aghanim Scepter is in uh, good consideration for him as well to be able to solve some of those issues. Just jump inside, whispers uh, Magnus. Yeah, and look at this aggressive pickup from Team Secret. They grab the gem on the Earthshaker. Uh, big fan of that. Feels like they're playing to win. Yeah. Like, not just against the Riki, right? But when you're trapped inside your base, you know they're going to have aggressive vision. You need to take that vision away from them so you can reclaim your farming spots. And 2k gold lead dips down to one, hovering around that area, relatively even game between both squads. If anything, I'd actually give Secret a little bit of an edge because of the amount of team fight they can put out and how easy it is. Yeah. I actually feel like this Riki, every time I have seen... Uh, seen him as a core, it feels a little Time bit underwhelming because of the way you have to fight. Yeah. And Schofield, you will die for daring to go for that arcane rune. That was a terrible idea. Yeah. Mid one collects it for his bottle, and the Shadow Shaman has been a really big part of infamous team fight in secret. They see that opportunity, a four position going down. That's an opportunity for them to take an objective. And look at this, they instantly know about the war drop by Stinger. Yeah. They're gonna deward that. That'll alert both teams that they know about each other's presence. Hector, gonna come back. And Secret, after they grab this tower, they have to deal with that top lane and that'll make it so that Schofield isn't pressured. Doesn't have the buyback anyways, but even if he did because of this top push, it sort of just makes things even. I really like this boot to travel for mid one as well, just allowing him to be able to deal with pushes like this but still uh, be able to join his team. I mean, he's he's a like a great combination, right, of catch against this Phantom Lancer and the side lane pushes, but also he represents so much team fight. He can't be absent from his team. Hard up next, win for the echo damage against an illusion hero. And it's gonna feel pretty value. Magnus looking for the RP immediately onto him. The smoke tree going out, but he still have the damage as a toss tree as well as man. Nisha's is just not really getting the bashes whatsoever. They're just trying to, to kill Stinger out there. It is going to be Stinger who goes down, but inside they have been one trapped and the shots the jab and the tricks of the trade. Now Chris Luck looks to be able to get out. They're going to be able to chase down Puppy. Who else from Seeker is going to get caught? Schofield, he's trying for it. He's got the blink dagger. He's got the shackles. He's going to dodge the arrow, try and get the hex off, even with the lotus orb. It doesn't matter. Just stop side from being able to blink away, and he does it. Hector gets on top of Anisha. Look at him, he's just sitting on the high ground. He's gonna try and go for right now. Does manage to get the arrow onto him, but immediately a smoke screen. Now it's Skewer back. No whisper gets stunned up by the yeah, RP. He's no. able to get that. The Echo Slam and the Volley as well. They rain damage from above to be able to finish off most of Infamous. Mass buybacks coming out. They're trying to save Hector. Half health, doppelganger away. Mid one jumps into him now. The RP. Skewer, the RP. It doesn't hit mid one, and that's so bad. He managed to get off the Fisher, and that's done onto Hector. The arrow is out as well. He nailed the Volley. Side with the Another fresh volley finished off. The support of Infamous and Team Secret, a long drawn out fight. And Roshan is up. That looks so good for them to start. They got the kill on the Earthshaker. They recovered the gem, but they just went for a little bit too much. And that's that discipline that this team, it lacks at times. And Secret, I mean, they have that experience. They know how yeah. that fight's gonna look if it goes on for long enough. I mean, I just can't believe they didn't just leave Zai behind. Nisha opting to go back in with mid one buying back at the same time and TPing in. It turns the fight around humongously. Look at him, he jumps on to Whisper, right as he was about to get the skewer into the smoke screen. And that then was such a sick echo right there. If they get RP'd yeah. in that situation, Secret have just bought back and lost the game. And this one too, the RP not, the skewer and the RP not catching mid one. He gets a Fissure out, so there's no damage onto the two that get controlled. And now they're going for the high ground and this is why in secret, they don't care about the gold leads. All it takes them is one fight. Yeah. In these positions, Maneski learned that the hard way. This team is scary because they will find a way to win. It won't always look the prettiest. But they always have. It's like the old EG, where you always have the team fight, you always have the ability to, to win the late game. Yeah, it just makes your early game look so weird. 
which is yeah. something I, I've been thinking about Secret for a while. Uh, it feels like they can't really play that mid-game tempo like, like they like to, uh -huh. but they'll hold the high ground great, and there will come a time where you will make a mistake against them, and you will falter. Yeah, because it's so easy to misstep. It's so easy to get a little bit too aggressive and get countered by buybacks. Because no matter how strong you are, if it ends up being a five versus 10, you're just not gonna win that. You're gonna run out of damage. You're gonna run out of cooldowns. Yeah, that's why mana. after we saw the win percentage, I thought it was actually in Secret's favor. Yeah. Uh, in fact, I thought it was like 70, 30 them. I think that's what I said. And they're gonna grab another kill here. Nisha, he has more than enough damage to kill Chris Luck. And this team, they're starting to fall apart a little bit. I mean, at this point, Chris Luck just can't show himself anywhere yes. around the map. 1,800 health with the BKB. That does not protect him. And the 25% backtrack again for the Faceless Void. Nisha continues to run this. I think he, we saw him do it in the uh, group stage That's as well. It's pretty value against yes. illusion-based heroes. Yeah, for sure. Slowing down the damage. And it's even better than Butterfly because there's yeah. no way that you can deal with it. It's not evasion in that sense. Yep. Zai. Top He's lane, looking for an opening. His smoke is going to break, so he should know, or unless he thinks it's the tower. He thinks it's the tower. Looked like he was walking in that area for a second, but uh, does know. Hector, for as farmed as he is, he needs a pretty big RP to set fights up for him. They just need their disables to be able to live. Schofield's ping for it right now. He wants his team to come in. Both teams actually know about this. Yeah, but it's so hard. Oh, he managed to get the shackle on his side. Here comes the arrow. The Fisher out as well, but he didn't blink anywhere. He does manage to get caught, but off Whisper with the skewer backwards. Both BKB is going down. There's where the RP is with Global Silence on Anisha right now. Mance is up. He's going to jump for Schofield, and he does have that cheese, so he's going to be in fighting shape. But Hector is trying to finish off He's trying to finish off the eye, and he does manage to get one, but mid one. Stunt the bump. No, the BKB at Hector. He is able to doppelganger away. Chris Luck with his own BKB, who's trying to go for the back line. Does manage to get a bit of bash on a mid one. Mid one. Low on mana. Does have enough just to be able to make one jump away. Chris Luck really wants to hunt him down. He's got the blink cast range too. If he can actually just get the vision, that's going to be opted by Schofield. First to Hex. Now the follow up. Chris Luck with the smoke screen slowing him down. Nisha coming back, back in here. The time dilation does have the manta. Hector, though, wants to be able to burn him out of his mana as fast as possible. And Nisha has just enough to be able to time walk away. But Chris Luck's not going to let him get out. He managed to get the bash there, controlling him up in the tricks of trade. The carry of Team Secret falls, and now maybe even a little bit more. Earthshaker still has that Aegis. What if they for him, but him. he's far. He is so far away. And Whisper, he would have to make a blind guess for the skewer, which he does just two seconds too late. And that fight, it looked like it was going to be so good, but for once, Hector led the charge. He tanked up so much of that damage. And the ward placement by the Shaman, by Schofield, was sick there. Yeah. He made it so that both melee cores on the side of Secret were stuck. They were huddled up together, lined it up real nice and easy for the rest of his team to come in. And now it's Infamous that are playing aggressively. Maybe they want to force the buyback out of Nisha, but he'll have Chronosphere on that respawn, and they have Echo. It's not like they blew a lot of spells. Infamous, they've got to be careful. Fisher first, no arrow. Hector has Hector's himself protected by Illusions, and again, Hector's gonna go for it. He got punished last time, but he does seem to care. Chris Luck, he gets hit by the Enchant Totem Avalanche out with the BKB, goes off first. He's gonna be able to get the bash on mid one, but he knows it's not worth committing for that hero. Mid one jumping in, immediately hexed up. Trying to get the silence as well. Hector He's wants to stay away from this guy as much as possible. Hector pops the BKB now. Mid one holds the Echo Slam. Now gonna try and finish off Puppy. Puppy is gonna be falling, but Schofield as well as Stinger both die inside the combo from Zai. And mid one looks like he wants to chase, but not gonna be able to do so. Completely burned out of mana. Zai clearing out some of these illusions, and that's the second range racks taken, but. And you have to wonder, did Infamous, did they just push their luck a little bit too much again because they don't have buyback on the Shadow Shaman? And they know about that on the side of Secret. They weren't able to burn out the Aegis. Mid one was never really able to get isolated out. He's way too tanky with the BKB and the Reaver. They'd have to get into a position where they're 1v5ing, just beating on him. It's crazy how Hector keeps on just running past mid one and going for these heroes in the back line. 
and mid one is trying to chase him down. But Hector, if he stays for that one creep camp, he will die. They've got vision on him too. Whisper on this high ground, gonna blink out. He's got a force jump as well, but he's not gonna use it fast enough. The Chronosphere does manage to catch him. They get the control onto the Phantom Lancer. They're gonna be able to get these silence, but they're gonna be beating the follow up. The Echo Slam it locks down the carry of Infamous, and it'll catch Whisper as well. They have Whisper, a buyback. He doesn't have buyback for 110. They have a buyback on Hector, but it's only gonna be three of them defending against Secret. Once again, Secret's buyback, Secret holding the high ground. It's gonna turn into an offensive position. I'm starting to think that Secret is actually maybe the most exciting team in Dota right now. Because of their playstyle and the way that they force teams to fight around them, everyone just obliges and you get into these weird situations where you just nonstop run at each other. Chris Luck is gonna try and get a fast kill onto this tiny, not so fast though. Look how tanky Zai is. Tricks the trade, trying to burn him out. Does manage to get a fast though, stays inside. He's down to half health, Zai. Trying to run away, but they're chasing so deep for this one. The BKB goes off for Chris Luck, but a four staff and Zai blink up. He's away. That was the buyback from Hector. This is going to push the gold lead to 12k. Secret in a very strong position now. That's what they wanted out of that. They can have their buyback on Nisha. He just needs some more gold. Same goes with Puppy and mid one. Yeah, and the scary, weird part about Secret is. Uh, when you're ahead of them, it never really feels like you're ahead of them. Yeah. And when you're behind them, it feels like you're going to lose the game. And let's say this about Infamous, right? They, we know they don't have buyback. We know that Secret has buyback. Everybody knows that. But I still feel like Infamous is not going to slow down. They're not going to sit inside their base. I mean, they went into a position at top lane, which was so ballsy, where they decided to go for a push. I mean, look at like Chris Lux just... Yeah, Chris Lux actually just went for that. If he has Chrono up, he pops VKB, you just die. Yeah, you then don't have VKB over. on Chris Lux, so if there's any sort of avalanche or fissure yeah. immediately. Yeah, the fact that they they went top against an Aegis and there was a buyback on Nisha just to get that one Rax, yeah. that really felt like they were playing the wire there. And that's the thing, is like this is why we talk about Infamous and their playstyle being so cocky. It just seems like they don't really care who their opponent is. They think they're gonna outplay them. They're playing in a position of inferiority. They're playing in a position where they don't have the buybacks. They're playing in a position where they could lose the game if they force a fight right now, but they're gonna do it anyway. And that's what you have to love about this team, is their commitment to just running at you and trying to win Dota. They just hit the level 25 on Hector with the doppelganger cooldown. It is so hard to lock this hero down, but Secret has so much control. It's gonna be a battle of reflexes between the BKB, the doppelgangers, they Chris Luck, the Tricks and Trade. They're trying to find the angle, get into the high ground. Scofield, Man, it's find his opening on a puppy. The Global Silence immediately popped out. Venetia pops BKB, goes straight for the Shadow Shaman, does manage to get him as well as Hector. That's massive. They're going to be able to get the Enchant on a follow up. Chains on him out for the BKB. Yeah. Goes out the RB and locks him yeah. everyone. Look at that hit. Whisper, can they finish him off? The Echo Save goes on and Hector says, no. That's not my fight. I'm out of here. Stinger's dead. They're just going to try and chase down the rest. It's going to be Chris Luck who falls as well. Stinger and Chris Luck, they do have buyback. But Hector, he was the one who could not die there. He was the one without buyback. And he does manage to get out safely. Oh, that fight. It looked like it was going to be OK for Infamous. But Secret, just too tanky mid one. 3,500 HP and a BKB. You're not taking down this hero easily. I mean, is Hector, are they, are they getting the Empower onto Hector? It just feels like when this RP comes down, he just doesn't do any damage to them. Uh, no, I don't think he had... He definitely did. Has fallen. I mean, he doppelgangers away. That's going to tear a lot, but... They just don't have the damage right yeah. now. Even with the awards with Ags. Secret, resilient again. And if this is what we talked about multiple times, and how to be able to play up Radiant against Infamous is to let fallen. them and all their aggression challenge you and put yourself into positions where you can kind of play. So whether that's being tanky enough to be able to take the fights, having early BKBs, playing on the high grounds. Because, you know, Infamous, once they get their heads into smoking and making a fight work, they're going to go for it anyway. That means Secret, after winning that fight, are going to be able to get the Roshan. That's Aegis, Cheese, and... A refresher shard for Nisha. We have any other big level 25s that just got picked up? We have the Avalanche cooldown from Zai's Tiny, who has the Chrysalis, soon to be Daedalus. So watch out for that tree volley, especially on top of the Chronosphere. And there's a hex on Yapsor, who 
been an absolute fiend in this game. Another item, more Satanics coming out for Secret. Mid one's gonna grab one too. Dude, there's so many instant disables for like, the disables that can come from outside of Vision as well with like Fisher and Avalanche. Infamous have to be like, super trigger happy with the BKBs. I love, by the way, how aggressive mid one's been in this game. Yeah. We said we, he needed these kind of games. He had one yesterday. This sort of just builds on it. Double, double. These are the kind of games that build your confidence. Uh-huh. Rework yourself. Because I think even he would admit he Radiant feels like his performances are probably a little bit underwhelming. But the last two, I mean, he's coming in clutch. His team fight in these games have been insane. That one fight that probably determined a lot of how this game looks, where he bought back, hits the three-man echo. Yep. Radiant's hit the echo, doesn't get hit by the RP. Like, so many little things he did right in that. Yes. He and should be absolutely commended for that. The smoke up from Team Secret. They're going to sweep through into the triangle here. If they can catch anybody from Infamous, it would be massive. It's and right Infamous probably have one more good fight in them left. Stinger. He does have buyback, so he's going to be the one. Cop the smoke rotation. Going to walk up this area, the rest of them. He could buyback, but he doesn't have a shrine to connect to the rest of the team, so it looks like the smoke is just not going to... It's not going to work. Yeah, Infamous are very likely just to pick up this bounty rune. Pick up this bounty rune. Okay, they're, trying they're to bait. baiting the bounty rune. Yeah, they're trying to bait the bounty rune, hoping that one hero comes in. Uh, the idea behind it is that everybody goes, Secret feels like they have control of this area, they grab the bounty rune. Yeah. And they just send one hero to do so. But I think Secret, they're smart. Don't walk up into that area where you yeah. don't have vision. Just go into the high ground right now and Secret will know that this was a trap. What's a bounty rune really gonna mean if you can go high ground and force a buyback out of Stinger right now? That just means the next fight, you just easily retreat and try, oh, look at this fast play coming out from Schofield, trying to make a sneaky little Serpent Ward trap, but gets caught by mid one. And add another, oh, now the Chronosphere coming out. Nisha's gonna be left alone, but he's one-on-one -on -one against Chris Luck, who, uh, I, uh, at a loss for words, he was so far forward. Yeah, the rest of his team got the message. They're like, let's hang back, and Chris Luck just decided, I'm gonna step out, dies almost instantly. Okay, well, uh, now there's uh, another hero without buyback. Schofield and Chris Luck just dying back to back like that means infamous. Left in a precarious position now. They do not have buyback due to gold on the Shadow Shaman. And team actually goes for the Riki. So if anything, Secret are probably just gonna be a little bit timid thinking maybe there's gonna be buy some buybacks coming in, but very rapidly they realize that this will be two lanes of barracks. They can't go for the Megas because of the tier two bottom. Has to be careful of Hector, though. He can certainly still do a lot. Nisha trying to heal up off the Satanic. Thankfully, you can heal off those illusions as well as the creeps that spawn. And he also still has an Aegis, so Team Secret. So many different arrows being launched by Yavsor. They decided to go for the minus five second Sacred Arrow cooldown. He's just chucking those out, hoping that one lands. Boots of Travel, now for Zyne. They've got another hero that can deal with these side lane pushes. They do have buyback on Hector, so... Well, we'll see whether or not Hector wants to finish off his Scotty that he's trying to build right now. Is this game gonna change anymore as we continue to go late? Because it seems like uh, watching these fights and such, Team Secret, the ease of execution, uh, the the opportunities that they have with so many heroes having an impact in team fights, it seems like they're just gonna hold an advantage for the rest of the game. It's really hard to fight into them just because of the sheer amount of disabled that they come with. Uh, and this SD5, he continues to grow on my list. Yeah. He's such an effective hero with the disruption. If it feels like one of those heroes, if you don't immediately kill him, he has so much team, impact in team fights. But he's not easy to immediately kill because he comes in with his own self-save mechanism. Yeah. And now that he's got the Ghost Scepter, they've got no real way to pop him. They don't have this magic damage burst. You don't want to have to all in so hard for that five position. We saw that in the game where Vici played, if you recall. Oh, they know. They know where Chris Luck is headed. They're going to drop Sentry, seeing he's going to run blindly into the high ground. But Chris Luck has other ideas. He's going to push behind this tier two mid. Seeing if anybody's going to get caught while Hector pushes in that tower. Yeah, and this is crazy still going because Secret, they're not actually just going to go for the Megas here. They're actually going to try and catch him from behind. That's going to start with Schofield falling. Now they're going to go into the trees. They're going to catch Stinger, who still holds his global silence. 
He does have a buyback if he can get the gold from him. The Enchant Totem after Enchant Totem just scouring the area. Finally does manage to find him. A jump forward, a tree volley out, but Chris is on the hunt right now. He does He's got the right idea. He does He's going to run into him. He just runs a little bit oh. further up. He would have gotten a sight to Sable. A quarter of an inch up, and he has him there, but throws out the arrow instead. Had the right idea, though, Yavsor. Hey, I just can't believe the number of times that Infamous, when they're down on buybacks, they're they're willing to push out like this. It's hilarious to me. It's like they just, they always go for it. Yeah. Uh, and I think Secret is reading that. They're starting to, it's almost like, uh, you know, prize fighter. He understands the movement. He's starting yeah. to time things a little bit better, figure out the reach. They're getting used to the fact that Infamous is going to be in those positions. Just like that bounty room read. That tree volley took so much damage. What a terrifying ability this late into the game at 50 minutes. Hector trying to hold by himself right now while his two supports just need a little bit more time. 33,000 net worth lead for Team Secret right now. Over 20k experience as well as they're all hitting their level 25s, even Puppy is closing in on his. Meanwhile, Chris Luck, I mean, that's a, that's one of those 25 talents you really need, especially since he already has the Aghanim Scepter. If he could get the 300 uh, Tricks of Trade AoE, it would add a lot to these fights. Oh, Singer, one more tree, but doesn't manage to nab him. Hector. Having the balls to just push outside the base and farm. But Secret is so good about disengaging. They're not giving them any sort of easy fights anymore. No, they're not. Very small but passionate number of fans for Infamous, I'm sure, back at home. Dude, South this America. Survived. There is a lot of fans screaming just like him. Cheering on Infamous. For them to be able to bring down the big dogs of Team Secret. But it just seems near impossible in this game with Secret holding such a large lead. That win probability that was once 82% in the favor of Infamous is now up to 94% for Team Secret. Secret, uh, Infamous just did something that gave them an additional 2%. I'm not really sure what Dota Plus <laughs> thinks that is. Uh-huh. Maybe it's just Boots of Travel. I can see Boots of Travel being it, right? Because that's the way you're able to like win a defensive fight and then go high, like TP in and go high ground real fast. <laughs> the Blitz just shrugs. Oh. I, just... <laughs> I can tell you how players think. I don't know what uh, I don't know what AI is gonna do. Jeez, secret. They just are not going for the high ground push like I expected them to. No, but gonna wait the Roshan the is up, so. If you have this much surely with this. Why not? Yeah. You win this game, you're one away from being top six. And this is an Aghanim Scepter as well, so somebody can grab that. Probably the Void, I'm guessing. Since he doesn't have any extra slots. SD is pretty great too. Yeah. And Mirana's not bad either. We've got a lot of options here. There's the Fisher out onto Schofield. Schofield again does manage to get the Hex out. Mid one, Serpent Wards are down the tree volley though, covering that area. Mid one fights underneath it. Hector still trying to chase down mid one with a BKB. He should be able to get away with the Chronosphere out. That tricks to the train allows the Riki to be able to live through it all and manage to get the bash on Denisha as well. They need to finish off Denisha as best as they can underneath the Serpent Wards as well, but they just don't really seem to have the damage. Denisha, he's willing to fight both him and Whisper at the same time, does manage to get the bash on the Whisper. Hector's the RP trying to go for it, but Chris Luck almost getting bashed to death does manage to jump away mid one he tries to hunt him down with the enchant totem instead turns back with an easier target of stinger who will fall and does not have buyback hector he tried to go for the back line he doesn't kill them but he does manage to live he does manage to make his way out of there but and hector is 1v3 but secret looking like achilles out there no one going down very easy fights for them I mean, if you're if your one position gets into a position where he's 1v3 and yeah. the rest of your team can't fight, it probably means 
that you're not winning that fight. Yeah, I mean, because Nisha was also 1v3, except for he was almost getting kills. Nisha dropping off a ton of mangoes for himself. But he realizes, so uh, mana burn. yeah. Time to, <laughs> it's gonna need a few seconds to consume all these. But if you just look at that chart, right? Look at the, the blocks of red at the bottom of that network chart and the just the solitary greens. Destroyed a tower. Got a kill on Puppy. For the last 20 minutes of the game, Infamous had not been able to hold on to a single real victory in this game. Secret have just been dominating the map and dominating every fight. And they still continue to hold the lead. It looks like they're just going to slow down the pace of the game. They're going for the absolute 100%. Dude, at this point, uh, like, are they just trying to test how how much damage Tree Volley can do? He's trying to get a Battle Fury now. He's got Daedalus and Crystalis, and he's looking at a Battle Fury. 42k, the largest lead that we've personally seen uh, in our cast at this TI. Yeah, that might actually just be the biggest lead of the tournament as well. Nisha, he's gonna pick up the Refresher Shard uh, in his backpack. It is still on cooldown for 80 seconds, though. He also has not consumed uh, the Moon Shard yet, so there's still a little room for growth for him. They're just gonna keep throwing illusion after illusion of the Phantom Lancer to finish off this tier three, while they also chuck out a bunch of arrows from the Absor, just hoping that they get that one hit that they need. Right, provide an opening in the team fight. Feels like some sort of mini game where there's so much that they have to evade. The tree volley, the Marana arrow. Chronosphere is the Enchant Totem jumps in. They're gonna lead with the Chronosphere onto the mid lane. Chris Lux in trouble, and they don't actually have a way to be able to save him, so he just dies like that. Nisha. And not having a way to save against the Chronosphere feels so rough. They're gonna buy back almost immediately, and there's no need, because they have the Aghanim Scepter, Seeker can chill out for 40 seconds here. They're gonna have Chronosphere up. That'll also be about the time the Refresher Shard starts coming off cooldown as well. It's scary when every single Chrono means somebody dies, and they have no way to do anything about it. Just no saves, because they opted for this Silencer as their five position. Secret being so confident, they can keep on picking up all the bounty runes, grabbing power runes as well. You just never know where uh, double damage is going to change the fate of this game. Look at this. I mean, they, they finish off the tier three, these illusions. <laughs> and been chipping away at the range barracks as well. It'll get the Observer Ward that was laid out as well. Yeah, Secret not taking any- Oh, Dragon says Hector! You gotta be careful at Tree Volley now! The arrow he wants his opportunity to be able to jump in with Arrow. Nail got to Chris Luck. They have to blow the Gold of Silence here, especially for Schofield, stuck inside the trees right now. Nisha beats him to a pulp inside the jungle. Now drops to Chronosphere. He's gonna go for the Riki, who does not have the vibe. Tree, tree Volley. Tree Volley, raining death from above. And now that's gonna be Megas coming in for Team Secret. They still have a buyback on his Schofield. If Hector can actually finish up this heal on a mid one to the Soul Catcher, it makes him a little skittish. He jumps away. This is going to be infamous battling against Megas. They seem kind of uh, okay with this idea. They're not trying to just throw their lives away to beat back Secret. And they're just hoping for that one fight right now. Whisper still has the RP. Oh, does the RP does one, get it, but the Force Staff gets him away. He was looking to be able to get the Skewer into the fountain, but instead he dies. He's immediately gonna buy back because Hector needs his help. He's gonna be chain stunned down though. Hector, can he jump away? A Force Staff, a Doppelganger. He's a little bit farther, but the volley comes in once again. And Whisper, who just bought back, Skewer's back to the safety of the fountain. GG. But no buyback from Hector means there's no more damage left, even as Whisper finally gets that RP Skewer. Look how tanky Secret is and infamous. They put up the good fight. They almost had a solid lead. They took two range barracks. They had an 82% win probability at one point, but Secret just continued to be that ultimate wall, that ultimate high ground defense. You think there's cracks, you think there's little openings, but it, oh, there's always a trap. There's always the buybacks to turn things around. Yeah, that one buyback play at Bottom River, that was so sick by Team Secret. Yep. The way that they baited Puppy buys back first, puts them in a position, they, they can't really recover, and that's gonna be infamous going down a game early. 
Looks like Nisha Learn not smiling. She's gonna walk back. Trying to keep his calm, trying to keep his nerves. It's this only one series, game. This series is not over again. Who knows what's gonna happen in game two. For that, we're gonna turn to our panel. Don't smile, that appears to be the secret. Naha is really quick, kind of what is your take of that first game now that we've seen these two teams go head to head? Absolutely amazing. I think you saw everything that we talked about from the strength of Infamous's early game to the ridiculous Dota that Secret played yesterday against Mineski. Mid one coming up huge now in two straight games for that team. Neil, how, how do you feel about these two squads? What do you think Infamous's best hope is in this series? I had originally criticized Infamous for being one of the least versatile teams in this tournament. Then they go out and pick a Ricky, who has not been selected at all in this entire tournament, and a Phantom Lancer. And I get it. I get it. We did see him, though, and he lost. And we also saw Phantom Lancer here that's not particularly popular at this tournament. Maybe rightfully so. I mean, it does fit, though. If you think about it, it's weird, but if you were going to replace a Slark mid, Ricky kind of fills that same role. You know, mobile, low HP core, but good laner, and then all of a sudden you're active on the map. And that's how Chris Luck likes to play. He wants to make things happen so that Hector has some time to get into the game. Deny mechanic. We talk so much about the refraction and Tidebringer changes where these two big mids no longer get their free denies. Backstep still works. I also want to ask, why is this hero suddenly popping up more and, and more in the meta? We, well, not, not so much yet, but we, we heard, not, not at this tournament, but we, we kind of heard from Gunner. It's something that he was starting to see more leading up to the tournament. What, what is it that allows that to happen? Uh, it's hard to say. I think it's just the maybe the area control that Ariki provides. Um, you've got the ability to just kind of dominate a certain area of the map while you can just kind of make plays with these very cheap items. You saw the double Wraith band and upgraded boots, natural like drums and diffusal buyer. Like you can get six slotted really quickly, whereas other heroes take a lot more time, especially with a slower meta like Midas Radius and Zoltan. Now, I know the other thing that you wanted to talk about, Kyle, was actually an engagement that went down in the Roche pit. Yeah, of course. Um, we wanted to educate some of our newer viewers here at TI and just go break down how a fight around Roche is theorized. The idea, you want to guard the pit, and you can see Infamous, they place their three sentries, the mag, sentries of course not being the ward, but the heroes, boom. Arrow, Secret's completely aware this is happening now, they pop invis, they try and immediately engage towards the pit. Infamous, they've got all their damage inside, they're trying to rush it, trying to rush it, and if you watch just about here, they do what you want to do to defend the pit. You keep your core in the crease, killing the Aegis, and immediately collapse. You want to take out this choke point, and you're going to see why in a second. The secret heroes, they have terrain walking. The two cores, Void and Mag, they can come over the side. But unfortunately, the rest of the draft is stuck here. All their damage is happening in the river. PL's just cleared the Roshan, and now we can leap forward into the engagement. You can see the Echo is about to be forced by mid one. This is useless. This is a PL with Aegis. We don't care anymore about damage taken by this hero. Worst case, you respawn. Now the Chrono comes in. There's still two heroes here outside of the pit, nowhere close enough to help provide damage. The silence, not even necessary but they clean up the tiny, they secure the Aegis. Just a very well thought out fight from Infamous. And unfortunately, they weren't able to close it out, of course, but they do certainly understand the mechanics of defending this objective and denying choke points. That was awesome. I, I, I just said that was actually awesome. I, we haven't gotten to do too many of those segments. You draw really fast. That was actually just really impressive. <laughs> Thank you very much for that, Kyle. We have plenty of more stuff that's going to be coming up, though, right now. We actually want to throw it down to Casey. This one's going to be a lot of fun. I'm excited about this one, too. So as you've seen from some of our interviews already, we always do a Media Days interview. We spend a lot of time with as many different members of as many different teams as we can, sitting down, getting serious, getting to the heart of what the last year has been like. But at the end, we like to lighten it up a little bit. So we ended this year of media interviews with what I like to call rapid fire. Show me what's on your phone. All right, rapid fire questions. What is the last text message you sent? This is very personal. Why, why do you ask? I feel violated here. Let's not do that. Yeah, let's not do that. <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah, I lost my shoes in the um, Philippines. That was my last message, my sketchers. Fuck my life. April 8th. What? What's the last text message you sent? Like heart smileys. <laughs> my parents. Good night, my love. Oh. And a couple, uh, <laughs> you know, kissing uh, hearts. Was that to misery? Last text message. 
probably not for a camera. Can you paraphrase? Uh, I texted my mom. I said, I love you. Today is the last day for uh, my dog's medication. Cute little puppy. Who is the last person you texted? I texted a female. A female? Yeah. Who is the last person you said I love you to? Probably Zai. <laughs> Aww. You know, mine's Yazid, actually. My girlfriend. My girlfriend. My mom. What are your most used emojis? Oh. Pigeon one, easily. You and Slacks. Are you also a pigeon? Yes! He's a smart guy, what can I say? Look at the WhatsApp pigeon, it looks so good. That is terrifying. What about the heart emoji for your beautiful wife? Just heart is not enough. You're both romantics. Thank you. Poop emoji. The smirky face. The whimper emoji. Are um, emojis and names? I don't use emojis. I'm sorry, what? It's only for your eyes. Kissy face, leg, poo emoji, eggplant. Yeah, a raccoon is there too. Pizza, pirate flag, pig, sheep, <laughs> burger. Got it. Thanks for getting serious. Thanks for asking such great questions. Okay. All right. <laughs> all right, so I kind of figured we would just be having fun with it, but I think we all learned a lot about these guys just from the emoji question, don't you think? Yeah, I, I think that the emojis are really telling and also who your last message is from. Like, uh, sometimes even when I'm on the panel, my mom will call me. I actually Thank have my you. last, yeah, my last message is from my, my dad actually right now. So thinking about giving him a quick call. Let me see. If... Yeah. Hey, dad. Uh, hello, son. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I'm at TI right now. Uh, oh. I just wanted to give you a quick call. Are, are we live on stream? Uh, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. You're live on you're live on stream well, right now. I, I just wanted to say two things to all the fans. First off, thanks for welcoming my son into our community, and of course, second, shut up, Kyle. What? We did not rehearse that part. <laughs> if mom gets to do it, I did not. I did not approve that. It's once this, it's once a tournament. It took me like five minutes to get your attention earlier to help break me, to help me like cue into this segment. And you're just furiously scribbling on that's what you were doing? Yeah, that's what I was planning. But we were gonna like, we were gonna gas you up. I actually wanted you to like jump in the call and be like, hey, like, like, like he's totally the... lying right now. No, I did not tell you to say that. I did not tell you. You told me to leave my phone in the green room. <laughs> oh man, that's not true. That's not true. You know what is true? What's true? We're starting to see secret fire on all cylinders potentially. If they're able to take down the series, how does the whole tournament look for them? Uh, it's certainly a confidence booster, but this is a series they're supposed to win, right? I feel like most people have already counted Infamous out, and it's just that first game. I loved what I saw from their draft. We all thought from the first four picks, Secret was way ahead, and then they have this really cool concept, the Riki and the PL. It, if they had been able to do a bit better in the mid-game, I think they perhaps close it out. They were inside of the Secret base for a while, but I, just didn't go the way. I, I kind of want to bounce off something that we actually heard Blitz say it, during his last cast. He kind of brought up the idea that he thinks that Secret is the most exciting team to watch right now because of their play style. Neil, do you think that that is something that we are seeing? Do you think that the way that they are actually going about their drafts, the way that they are enacting those drafts as well, do you think it's making for these really exciting games? You tell me any other coach is gonna come out of that booth, get interviewed by Casey and say that his team's angry? No one else has been doing that, but Secret's doing it because they are angry. This is a series that they definitely think they should have had. They, they thought they should have had the last series all the group stage series, everything short of that is something that they are not satisfied with. And that's something that makes their draft so exciting because they need to keep throwing people off balance. I want to comment. There was one other thing that Blitz said on the, in that cast that I thought was really important. You asked me in our open, what do you think it takes to win TI? What are the characteristics of champions? Blitz said something during that cast. He said, you know, with Secret right now when they're playing this way, when you're ahead, you don't feel like you're really ahead. And when you're behind, you feel like they just win the game. That, to me, you look back at Wings, you look back at Liquid, you look back at OG last year. The great teams at this tournament, it feels like they have extra lives. It feels like no matter how the game goes, they're going to give themselves that chance to win. And I know everybody's down on secret, choking at TI, whatever. They continue to play this way. 
they still got a shot. Yeah. And, and Kyle, I, I think that you're a person that can really talk about this as well. You know, this is obviously a play style where you start thinking of the word momentum. I, I think you know more so than a lot of people, like how big momentum can actually be up there on the main stage. Oh, for sure. Well, unfortunately, I only know how it functions in the reverse, because usually if you start losing, it continues. But looking at the way that that last game was played, I can't talk about PhD Dota like Alan can, but I think Infamous needs to go back to what they were playing earlier in the series, kindergarten style, all right? I want Slarks, I want Wraith Kings. It's so difficult to execute at, an at a high level. Yeah. Heroes like Silencer and Magnus and Riki and PL, it's like you don't really have a sense of the flow of the fight as you would with just, you know, stun, stun them again. So, so w when you say kindergarten style, you're kind of going back to an idea that I think all of us have said on the panel before, which is just ease of execution. You're, you're looking for something that they can put together and have that ease yeah. of execution. I also want to really quickly, before the teams do come out, I know that they are going to be getting ready right now. You know what? We all need to talk about it because the teams are already making their way to the stage. We're going to take a look. Let's see if this is going to be a 2-0 or if we'll make it to, all the way to game three. And now the team's taking the stage. We already know that Secret's been able to pick up that early momentum. But the question is, are they going to be able to do it again? One of the ideas that I do want to talk about is stuff that's happening inside of, of their laning phase as well. I also do want to say, if you look at overall tournament momentum, yes, they're at the same spot. But I think if you are infamous, you're definitely going to be feeling a little bit of extra yeah. wind in your sails. Oh, for sure. I mean, I think it's still infamous with momentum. Yeah. True. Um, Secret, like, they, they won't be satisfied with anything but a win. Like, they're still trying to play catch up after losing to EG in the upper bracket. And, and Infamous has already set a record for their region. This is the best placement that the region has actually had at TI. But to get a little bit more insight as to what their goals are for this tournament, let's see what they had to say to Casey before TI even got started. Schofield and Stinger of Infamous. Welcome. <laughs> Hola. <laughs> Hola. ¿Cómo está usted? Bueno. You noticed the Aegis. Yeah. Sí, estamos este, ansiando tenerlo así entre, para el equipo. ¿no? I want to start by asking you about Dota in South America, because it is very popular, and I know that people watching TI9 are going to be very proud to see you play, and I'm wondering how you feel about that. Mm -hmm. uh, pues la gente en Sudamérica es como que bien apasionada por el juego, al menos en nuestro, en nuestro país, en Perú, hay bastantes cabinas y toda esa gente es que pues les gusta el juego al igual que nosotros y pues nos sentimos bien ¿no? de representarlos y uh, nos están apoyando mucho. Y a ver, una, una por otras cosas también que juego Dota es porque, o sea, es por la gente, por los fans, o sea, me gusta representarlos. How long have the two of you played together? Mm, tres meses. Solamente tres meses. Tres, dos meses, eh, pero nos conocemos también antes. Estuvimos en el Infamous que estuvo en el DPC del 2017 al 2018, y ahí jugamos también como que unos cinco meses, más o menos. No one on your team has experienced TI before, so what do you expect? Eh, pues esperamos encontrar usted, desafíos, un montón de emociones que nos vamos a encontrar aquí, estamos seguros, y pues lo principal creo que es hemos venido a divertirnos. There is some positives to coming into TI with no prior experience in a way. Do you feel like that enables you to just kind of play Dota and focus on your Dota and not worry so much about TI being this enormous thing? Um, pues sí, ajá, lo vemos como que de esa manera, como que más... Eh, Eh, divertirnos no jugando Dota porque es lo que venimos haciendo y claro una meta no es así clasificar al TI lo conseguimos estamos muy felices pero es si al final del día es, sigue siendo si, solo jugar Dota no entonces sí sentimos eso no creo que sí otros equipos tal vez tienen un prestigio que cuidar no tal vez un top al que llegar pero nosotros nos sentimos más libres How do you think that the South American Dota 2 scene can grow Mm, para que crezca la escena pro y mm, yo creo que sería aumentar no sé los torneos para equipos tier 2 no de allá para que los equipos se esfuercen más para que haya más equipos. But you can still win. Anything can happen at TI. You've earned your spot here before we start group stage as one of the top 18 teams. Are there any other players here that you're really excited to meet that you've maybe watched in previous TIs? 
en personal, como que, ya, como que ya los he visto ¿no? antes, entonces sí es bueno verlos de nuevo, ver alguna especie de, de química que tienen otros equipos interesantes, como por ejemplo, no sé, a mí me gusta la vibra que tiene Liquid, por ejemplo. O sea, yo cuando jugué Dota no, no conocía que había buenos jugadores, o sea, jugaba Dota y simplemente porque era un juego nada más y crecí jugando Dota sin saber, sin admirar a nadie, o sea, simplemente jugaba y ya, se puede decir. O sea, no, no es que desprecio, no son buenos, ¿no? Pero sí. igual no lo, no lo veo eso, simplemente juego. juego. Muchas gracias. Gracias. Buenas tardes. Gracias. No hay más preguntas. <risa> Quiero más preguntas. <risa> Now, we keep talking about the achievements that these guys already have at TI and what they've done for their region, but I think one of the other things we do need to look at is this is just flat out the youngest team we have in this tournament. You, you hear a little bit in the interview that they're saying, hey, look, like we, we didn't necessarily grow up idolizing certain players. Yeah. But I do want to, and Kyle, you're the one who can answer this the best because you, you've, you've, you've kind of you, you've beaten some Allen lane before. That's true. It, it, now, he admitted it on the bus. Is that why? <laughs> it was, like, if you're in a, a, a moment like that hmm. and, and you're playing against a player who has, like, all, all of these big moments, is that something that's going through your head? That's something that we do need to be thinking about as we start looking at these teams right now in the next game. Infamous versus Team Secret. Game two. Team Secret have continued their lower bracket run up 1-0 against Infamous, the South American hope. What are we expecting to see Infamous change up now that they're down a the game? Mm, I was listening to what Kyle said, and I, I, I mean, Wraith King. Just go with the opposite, right? Band. Yeah, yeah kind of. I mean, Wraith King was first banned, so you can't really go back to that. And that uh -huh. Slark, I don't think you can ninth pick a Slark into like having a tenth open pick, yeah. right? So it was that a little happened. Bit they did that there. once in the group stage. Yeah. I think against RNG, they got. 10th pick Shadow Fiended. Yeah. He got solo killed mid and they lost in 14 minutes. Exactly. And that's why I think a hero like Ricky, right? There's not. People just don't know how to counter it yeah. yet. I mean, they tried the Earthshaker and actually Chris Luck, he had a pretty good lane versus it. They, they went back and forth. So I I like I like their draft. I think a few execution errors lost in that game. So this is cool. They didn't ban the Ench, but they do a first pick on Secret. Yep. The so, expectations very much that they would yep. not give it to him. Yeah, there. there it is. So Infinite is going to ban their own Ench to defend against the. Team Secret Edge. Yeah. But all the other bands are the same. They're still trying to keep Infamous away from their core play style. This kind of yeah. core protect one. Well, Secret basically get an extra band since they have first pick. Yeah. So they get to take out the Magnus. So now Infamous are going to have to dig one deeper since not just their three best heroes, but now their four best opening heroes have been taken away. Yep. I almost feel like Infamous might be looking at something like a Shadow Demon because that denies a ton of Hector's heroes, I feel like. And if they have it themselves, obviously, then they can pick up this Lifesteal or this Sven kind of heroes he likes playing. That hero just denies a lot of heroes yeah, it really right now. Does. <laughs> all the carry melee. It feels like it really does. Even like every strength hero, all these like Timbersaw, Bristlebacks, even Tiny, they lose 40% of their health no matter what. Yeah, yeah. Yep. And Gods, you were t you were on timeout. This hero like should be getting banned, I think but it like be where where do you put it in? Like obviously uh, they think, I mean maybe instead of the Omni or something, but Rubik's. obviously they're scared. I think yeah. Tiny, you don't know where it's going to go. The flexibility that they can run at mid, off lane, or even four position, um, you, it's just so hard to play against. And when he gets that axe timing. I mean, tree Volley is just an insane spell right now. Yeah, even as a four, we've seen how much we can do this tournament. Yeah, you can still farm an Ag Scepter as a four. These games are dragging. You're going to get your Blink into... You can just go Blink into Ags and then get the Echo Saber afterwards. There's there's so much room for this hero to get farmed. And there it is. I, I like it. Uh, another save, if you can get it during the toss combo. In the early game, it'll save a core. Yeah. A lot of, uh, you know, damage for this Tiny. This Tiny's going to have, like, 3k HP at, you know, 20, 30 minutes in the game, and 40% of that's just gone at the start of the fight. Do you want them to pick a core here? Do you think they will? Do you think possibly you go with your Hector hero paired up with that? Yeah, usually they've been picking their Hector hero pretty early because his lane doesn't matter as much because he's, he's just going to jungle anyway, like level four. So give him a bad lane and make space for him. Yeah, so they play like Chris Luck. He'll usually have a good lane, right? He had the, I think, most CS by 10 minutes in. Yeah. And then after that, he doesn't even care. They'll just go over and then Hector, that's when he starts farming. So I think we'll probably see that unless there's like a Whisper hero they really like. Is it really just like the life stealer that stands out as far as these heroes oh. go? Oh, Whisper Hero is going to be picked up. Yep. I, I think Life Stealer as well as Sven. We're both looking good here. I think they're both okay to pick up early, but they do go with the the Tide Hunter. 
Yeah, just a, you know, some team fight, a good laner. I, I know we talked about this hero quite a bit recently about how some people don't really like it that much. Yeah. Uh, it gets picked a lot, and in some of the game it looks a little underwhelming. You have this like 25 talent that makes you really strong with 250 damage, so you can kind of scale into the late game, but it's kind of worrisome when you pick these two heroes that don't really have stuns. Yeah. Right, like Disruption's a soft stun, it's kind of a banish, and the Ravage is an ultimate, and you can't ultimate for every single solo pick off a game, right? So it's a, I think they're five, if it's Shadow Demon, they need like a four or a mid that kind of has stuns so that they can continuously fight. Because if they will only Ravage and fight around their Ravage, they're going to have Chrono every fight. And I think Chrono is a probably stronger skill than Ravage. And I like this. The the Void, I mean, they've been first pick, first phasing it a ton here. And honestly, a lot of people would be like, well, Tide versus Void, it's going to be really bad. It's not that bad for Void. Like, he'll get harassed a little bit. But once you get like level five, you start taking that off. You're just going to start like either creep skipping, whatever. It, it's not that bad. And now you have the team fight. And that's how Seeker won last game, right? They had the overall better team fight. Also, the Void can go into Silver Edge if he really feels the need for it. He's a natural Shadow Blade buyer. It seems Secret just understand these are maybe two of the best cores right now in the game. Because you go back, what, even the start of the group stage, you go back a few months, you'd almost ra very rarely see cores being picked up, multiple of them, in that first stage. But that's what Secret are willing to do. I know a lot more players are comfortable picking their heroes earlier in the game. Uh, it used to be, at least like for me and like I think a lot of other players, is they'd be really scared of getting countered. So it's like when I'd be picking my like an Ember Spear, I'd be like, oh, I don't want the other team to pick like a Nyx to counter me, right? Yeah. And someone told me, I think it was March, he basically said like, you're a core player, why should we be really scared of these supports? You know, it's like they're just a support. You're a core. You're the bigger hero of the game. You have to you have to overcome these you know like walls, these obstacles in your way to like win a Dota game. And sometimes your game's gonna be hard. There's gonna be counters, you know. Hero counters, lane counters, you know. There's but, always gonna be. Yeah, it's no game's gonna be like perfect, right? Yeah. And that's where like, you know, playing all these pub games, which is what most of these pros do, can really help from me. It's because, you know, you pick your hero up, you're often playing into those 10 pick counters. That's why a lot of times even some mids, when they want to practice a hero, they'll just first pick it like 20 pubs in a row. I know like RTZ does it, CCNC will do it. Uh, at least from like, I, I know the NA region more, but they will like just take a hero, you know, like RTZ do with Arcord, for example. You just spam that hero. And he learned all the matchups. He learned what people would want to pick against it, although, uh, you know, what people wouldn't really pick against it, what it would be really good against, good with. And you got to learn a lot of hero matchups because people would draft around it. You, you got to sacrifice your MMR. Honestly, a lot, <laughs> a lot of people say that, but like you, you might have to sacrifice to learn. Like if you want to be number one MMR, good for you. But if you want to be a pro player, you, you have to be willing to learn, as you say. So they're going to take out uh, a lot of those strong heroes right now in the second phase. They're kind of banning to protect their first phase. Uh, with Infamous, the AA ban, it helps against Tidehunter. You can't remove the debuff, the Ice Blast. So the Tidehunter gets a little squishy. And then from the tide, tide, uh, the team of Team Secret, they're taking out Naga and the Mirana, just like a strong four with the Shadow Demon. And Always scary. Yeah. The Naga, Naga also... Are you, have you seen him play much? I haven't seen... I mean, I, I'm pretty sure Hector can always play it, but I have just not seen him play Naga. I don't think they play it because... Uh, I think it's not like his type of hero, right? Like he likes he likes to be the one hitting creeps. Yeah. When it's you're just... having these illusions hitting creeps, that doesn't oh, yeah, feel yeah. the same. <laughs> no. It is just one of the best matchup counters to void, though. Yeah. And I think sure. that's probably what they understand is like, maybe he doesn't play it, but what if he does? Yeah, you just get rooted and you can't jump away. Yeah, and you're just, as a void, it's so hard to ever find the real Naga. You just have illusions being thrown at you. It's annoying. Um, Even a song, whenever you chrono, if you don't yep. BKB early. I mean, we saw like early in the game when the PL had the defusal, like this void had a lot of trouble dealing with it. It's kind of the same with Naga. You get defused, you're just dead, and you're just dead in the water. I do like the Elder Titan ban. Obviously, it's the same as AA. It's something that goes Ooh. good into there. And oh, yes. Bringing back some of the old school classic void counters. We are in a whisper. He played a ton of this hero as well in the qualifiers. So is this a uh, Skullfield? I think it. Shadow Demon? And a five tide? That's a good well, question. I think, I I think like, they would, ran yeah. a five tide before. I believe they have. And Doom you know, Tide. Rush level one's not bad. Yeah, Doom Tide as a 3 4 doesn't sound the greatest. So. Yeah, it doesn't. I mean, they could obviously be a support Doom, but from what I've seen them playing, it's almost always Whisper yeah. Doom. Oh. A puppy Witch Doctor picked in response. There's a, a five position just to secure that lane to help the Void out, I feel. I think that's uh, Team Seeker watching the replays from yesterday. Their match against Maneski, Ninja Boogie played Witch Doctor against a Tide. Yep. And he completely ruined the Tide's game for the first 20 minutes. Yep. You can't remove Maledict. It's really good against these tanky heroes. And it's damage inside the Chrono, which yep. is always good. There's the Life Stealer. Yep, we figured they took the Shadow Demon. He's either picking that or Sven. Like, I didn't see them taking any other hero. Hector Classic. He likes going Midas. He likes going Radiance on the hero. Yep. 
Uh, he can go Howard as well, kind of help against the Void, force me to go MKB. Get his casual belt of strength. Yeah, just kind of hold in his inventory for 20 minutes. Hmm. Well, Secret probably looking for some damage inside the Chronosphere, I feel, with Yapsaur's hero as well. They have got the Death Ward, but can't really go wrong with throwing in some more damage, or at least some follow-up to it. Yeah, his uh, Mirana and his Rubik oh, are taken out, but well, the Enigma. Wow. There's well, the, that late game team fight that Seeker yeah. loves doing. We saw versus EG in that game too. You have the Enigma, you have the Chrono now. That, I mean, we didn't talk about, but the Tiny Ags is like almost an end all be all of the late game now. Enigma versus both Tide and Lifesteal feels fantastic. The Doom is the maybe one here that can be annoying, yeah. but even that is still like a kind of low cost range. You can't just throw it immediately when you see that Enigma black hole come out. So going to the tournament, a lot of more teams I think prioritized Enigma. Like in the past couple of months, they, sure. would, yeah, they would kind of first ban it, first pick it. And the idea was that it would almost always win your offlane. You get one deny per wave. He also just is one of the best heroes to jungle with right now. But a lot of this uh, meta, this tournament, has been the fours are a little more free to roam. There's more like creep cutting for them, the three, so the fours will have a little more open game, and now they can walk at this Enigma and juggle. And it might be a Zai Enigma. That's what we saw yesterday. So, who knows? Tiny, I think that's the thing. Tiny yep. Enigma, they're both going to get farmed no matter what. That's just how Secret plays, and especially with these two heroes. Lena Ban, that's just kind of a stable mid, I think, that if the, tide, uh, the Tiny's like a support or offlane, that they can just throw a Lena on mid, he's going to do fine in whatever matchup. It's also really good against a lot of Chris Lux heroes. Uh, the, the Ember, the yeah. Monkey, the Slark, the Selena is just going to stun you in the lane, hit you six times. And I didn't see, but I assume Infamous chose last pick. I think for a team like them, getting that last pick for Chris Luck, like he is the most momentum-based mid player, feels like. Well, which one of Chris Luck's heroes do you think they would like this game? Uh, it seems like a hard Slark game. I, I think we still got to see secrets, right? Because I think they're picking their hero last. Because if it is something like, what if they pick Kunkka? Sure, Slark it up. That's the thing. But what, what do you think Secret's going to pick first? Do you think they need more team fight? Or you already have Enigma, Tiny, Void. They probably need more lane push from their mid. Oh. Like the Lina ban would have been good if it wasn't. Uh, hmm. If they pick something like OD, it's like they're going to be really greedy. So I think they need like a less greedy. less greedy, more pushing lanes, a little sacrificial so that your Void and your Enigma can kind of you know, claw their way up the net worth. I could see Secret taking a Sniper. In their ninth pick, they've been taking, or their last pick, they've been taking Sniper a lot when they don't see the enemy team's middle. And you have the, the Chrono, you have the Black Hole. I'd be a little scared against the last pick. True. Uh, I mean, who really counters Sniper in the lane? Like, what's his worst matchups, yeah, you think? That's true. He doesn't really have that many bad matchups these days. He. Because you can sit back, you can even shrapnel farm jungle. Yeah. He, he loves farming the jungle. Mid one is farming it at like level three on the Earthshaker. They're going to run the tiny mid. Oh, they last okay. pick a bad. Yeah. They get another hero that doesn't really care too much about the team fight yeah. spells, like the Ravage or whatever. Could be a flex two, three yep. or four with the Enigma. Yeah, so open lanes. I think it'll probably you think it'll probably be a four Enigma and yeah, Zai probably. on that ABBA. Yeah. You got tower push now as well, because they were actually kind of missing a little bit of it besides the Enigma. It lanes really well against Life Sealer. He won't have open wounds for the chase so if he ever gets open wounds your shield or removes it he'll be able to walk away all right you're the mid player gunner you see you know it's going to be a tiny mid not much roaming potential who are you asking for i think i want something to help with my life stealer to rotate around once he wants to infest you don't really have good infest targets because this doom and this tide are okay but it's hard for them to like feel comfortable like only jumping the back line right they want to jump a core and doom and the tide doesn't want to go in first so something that's comfortable jumping the back line with the life stealer, like a storm or a zoo, um, an ember type hero, I think is kind of them. Hey, it's nice the storm. storm Cause I, I was gonna hey. be like, we don't see him play it that much. And yeah. here it is. They need something that scales. They just had life stealer with tide doom and like team fight heroes, but no damage. And that's where a storm gives him another late game option. I, 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 I like it. I, I'm not conf sure how confident he is on the hero. I think I, I've seen him play in pubs like a fair okay. decent amount. Same. But I don't think he plays it this much this tournament. But it's the same style, right? Like, uh, people are playing it more early game than they used to. People used to go this, like, Treads, Kaya, Bloodstone build. And now they go Treads, Kaya, and they fight with the yeah. Overload talent. All right, well, that's the end of our Game 2 draft. We've got Sunbeat with Casey on the stage before we hop into Game 2. Sunbeat, you've always been good at being really transparent with us. Last time I talked with you, I asked how the mood was, and you had just gone through a loss. You said you were angry. How's the team feeling right now? Um... I think we feel like we need to be cautious. I think it's an easy, um, 
it's, it's easy to let go of the control because um, they're a very respectable team. They're the underdogs, so it's easy to, uh, it's, there's a pitfall. There's a mental pitfall. And I think we're being very cautious and we want to try to respect them. We do respect them immensely. They've been bullying everyone else. So we want to make sure we do the things right. All right. Thank you so much. Best of luck. Thank you. Back to you guys. Yes, it is so important to be able to respect your opponents as this is going to be quite the series that we have. You saw that Sunbi respected the hell out of him. Yeah. He was very worried about that. And that's why we also saw the 60, the 45k gold lead. Oh, yeah. Where they just don't go for the high ground. They just built it up more and more and more. You could see the team secret. They respect the hell out of Infamous and they're not going to let them get an opportunity back into this game. We'll see if they can close out the series, though. 2-0. Or we're going to tie it up going into game two. Secret versus Infamous, and they're gonna go for their Life Stealer Storm Spirit. This is a combo blitz that we saw before. Uh, we casted one of their games to the group stage, and one of the interesting things about it, they just don't really seem to use the Invest Bomb a whole lot. I'm gonna be real here. Uh, Hector is like the one most like one purpose man I've ever seen in my entire life. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I've yeah. never seen somebody that has just said to himself, you know what, I'm actually, I'm gonna use this Invest purely for farm. They did one Invest Bomb the entire game with a Storm Spirit. But anybody that picks Storm Life Stealer automatically goes up in my books. They will love you for doing it. Uh huh. Uh huh. Uh, whenever I see Storm at a TI, oh, it makes me happy, Cap. I, I thought you said you wanted to see Storm lose. Oh no, at a uh, TI I think he's because he's certainly gonna lose because he's bad. But oh, okay, uh, okay, it still okay. Makes me happy, like. <laughs> really pushing that narrative that Storm needs more buffs, huh? Yeah. Let's we'll see how uh, Infamous fares this time. I think Game 1's narrative was really interesting, right? That uh, Secret did give up a lot of the mid-game to Infamous. Infamous, like, dominated that period of time, had that really high win probability, but Secret, they just had a style that seemed to clash really well against Infamous, which is just hold the high ground, wait for this, the one little mistake to be made, wait for one little mispositioning or initiation gone awry. We're gonna see Zai, who does with the open wounds, gonna be slowed down quite a bit here. Trying to get away, they have another gush in a second. Can they actually kill him? Yeah, they've got him. With the aphotic shield for the pullback, what? level one. He went for full level one? I mean, they want that first blood real badly, and thankfully Zai doesn't have miscoil because he's just one hit away, and he's gonna get the bounty rate as well. Can they catch up to him? The Gushroom Singer finally gets that kill. Now you've got a level one full storm. Yeah. Uh, maybe maybe that's the safe lane build, because that's what we're seeing is a safe lane storm here. We're gonna have a mid lane life stealer for Hector up against mid one's tiny. I really like this new pick, by the way. I think it's really nice against the Void. Um, I've been waiting for teams to pick something against the Void. You need either some way to disable him or you need some sort of hard save. And we saw what a hard save looks like in that game uh, where Liquid had to play against that Tiny. Maybe not the best solution for Volley, but if you could run at this combination, keep you from getting Chrono, maybe that's the way to deal with it. That's Infamous's hard read anyways, as they give it, they give it up again, Cap. Yeah, they actually have the save from Shadow Demon. They've got the heart disable of the Doom. They've got the initiation and the burst potential of Storm Spirit plus Life Stealer. They seem to have every single answer you would want against a Faceless Void, but Secret do have answers in return. As we're going to see Puppy finally show himself in the bottom lane, trying to get some damage on Schofield, but he isn't scared. You know what's funny? Uh, I think that Tree Volley is straight up like one of the best things in the game right now, if not like oh, yeah. the best in counting. And it's, oh, yeah. it's kind of wild because uh, for a while, everyone just thought it was terrible. Yeah. But the fact that it also applies the Echo Saber hits, um, it's such an easy way to fight. It just turns Tiny into like some sort of range oh, gyro. Zai gets away into the trees. They're both going to pop their healing salves. Went for the early pickup of the Mist of Avernus. Now Schofield's in trouble as the Bash comes out from Nisha. And he finishes them off before the disruption can go out, even out the kill score. So something interesting that we noticed about Secret, uh, and the reason why, you know, I was so confident that they were going to end up winning that game despite what it looked like, is because I think they have this like principle established now for TI. Normally, what you do uh, when you come to events like this is you think of an idea and you sort of hold strong to it. It seems like they're going for sort of like that old EG TI5 style. Pick something that can go through BKBs, so you're yeah. always dangerous to go high ground against, and then just right out the game, wait it out. 
uh, because I think Secret have been in so many Mega Creep situations or having like two racks up or two racks down where it doesn't actually matter that it doesn't feel like they want to commit for those racks anymore. Yep. And it doesn't really feel like they mind losing one set anymore either as long as they can win the team fight at some point. As long as you're not getting straight up Mega and held in your base, which is why when they were behind by 45k or when they were up by 45k, they still weren't able to go high ground. Yeah. They said to themselves like, this is the easiest way, especially with the XP change for you to just straight up lose the game. Zai picks up the early miss coil finally and does manage to get himself a deny. But yeah, I see exactly what you're talking about. Uh, they, they basically said to themselves, Infamous were in this position. They tried to go high ground too early. And they lost. Through the game. We're not going to do the same thing. And and I think feel like Secret's probably one of those teams who uses buybacks really well. And that's part of the reason they're able to make these, uh, these sort of high ground defenses. Maybe a good read on what heroes can be sacrificed to force out an initiation. They're going to try and go for Zai again here. Chris Luck gets a little bit more of a slow. The anchor smash is not quite enough. Zai is going to be able to get off the Aphonic Shield. Does have a Mist Coil prepared. So if Stinger brings him low but doesn't actually finish him, Zai will get another deny. He's going to try and burrow his way through the trees. He's getting that slow regen up as well. Stinger gush him once, hit him with the anchor smash. Aphonic Shield immediately comes out, and Zai should be fine now. Still not having the ideal lane that he wants. Certainly not. And not as it uh, it comes at the benefit of Yapsor, who's going to be playing that four position Enigma. The body blocking here, they're really recommitting to killing Psy. The Aphonic Shield goes down, but there's the pull from Chris Luck. He's going to turn and try and actually kill Chris Luck in return, trying to get the deny simultaneously going for the kill, but Psy misses both. I'm not entirely sure how worth that that is because Yapsor just got like two waves under the tower and he's already level three with Arcane Boots. And Yapsor is actually going to try and kill Chris Luck here. He does have Malefice. He's gonna hold it for the time being. He's got the boots advantage as well, but Chris Luck is so tanky with the Ring of Bacillus. Yeah, Storm naturally has quite a lot of armor to him. But I do think that's the, uh, the principle that Secret is gonna ride for this TI. Yeah. yeah. Hold high ground, uh, don't ever go for high ground yourself unless you're overwhelmingly ahead. And even then, they're playing it so cautious. They've got an SD on their team last game that enabled them to do that. So let's talk about what Infamous needs to do to be able to break that kind of style. That very reserved, bend, don't break is, is a term that you frequently use for these kind of styles, right? Just letting the enemy crash into you over and over again. And uh, at some point in time, you're going to break them defensively, and then you maintain control of the map. Like I'd like to see Infamous be a lot more patient. OK. Uh, going for Rex. Oh, this Zai is quite the man fight the between Maledict and the Shadow Poison. Both have uh, damage options that build up over time, but it looks like Schofield's the one to be able to back down. But top lane, the rotation for mid one, killing Chris Luck. And now Zai trying to chase down Stinger. Yapsor in mid one is going to join him here. An early rotation secures the bounty room, but also gets two kills in the top lane. These are the kind of rotations that we got really used to seeing from mid one throughout the DPC. He's really aggressive moves into the side lanes where he doesn't really care how his mid lane's going as long as he's helping that out. But I think the way to deal with it is either you out greet them uh, and force them into a position where they actually have to make the move. So give yourself the best late game possible. Yeah. I think that's one really good way to deal with secret. And the second really good way to deal with secret, I think is the OG principle of hit a timing and then just nonstop control the map. Don't so, let them ever leave the base. Set up aggressive wards. Allow Topson to scour out your jungle. Make it really hard for them to ever leave. So the first one sounds like an EG principle, but the second one, that sounds a little bit more like Infamous's Alley. I mean, we've yes. talked about how they can be so aggressive and so good at being able to outplay any teams here that if they can hit that kind of time, we just control. Zai may be falling here, trying to go for the miscoil, but you could see Infamous were canceling their attacks, trying to force out that miscoil and secure the kill rather than the deny. Now they might be able to get Yapsor as well. He instantly TPs away, though, after the only stun that they had. So the, the question then, used. Whisper getting gone on at bottom is maledicted. Oh, and he gets the bash! Nisha, twice now, has gotten just the perfectly timed bash to claim a kill. The question is, do you think that, do you think uh, Infamous has the better late game? Because that's how it works when you think you have the better late game. Yeah. And, oh well, that question's up your alley then. Do they have the better late game? They I have think, answers to void. I think if they're up like 10k, their lineup is actually really sick. Okay. Uh, that's when I feel comfortable calling them. Because I think Doom is going to be a really good hero in this game potentially. But his laning phase isn't the easiest. This bottom lane and uh, Abaddon is such a good hero against him just because he's able to constantly throw out the aphotic shield, the miscoil, keep people alive. 
Because when you use Doom, you want it to be a finishing spell. It doesn't feel good to just use it to get somebody out of a team fight. Dude, look at this. Minwon's using his illusions to try and get more and more chip damage on this offlane tower. Sheikor to very clearly have this idea that this early tower damage matters. It, Nisha did it in the first game, and now we see Midwan do it as well. It is going to push up the lane to Whisper, which is why mid one wants to get aggressive here. Maybe even try to set something up. But Whisper going to pop this Scorched Earth, bring the creep wave back a little bit. And they're going to concede that first tower of the game. Yeah, that 1-1-4 one, one, build. Max out tree throw. That is deadly. Yeah. And what's so scary towers. about this combo, this Faceless Void Tiny combo is, you know at some point they'll get it off. And yeah. that's going to be sure death for anybody. Uh, Infamous this time around, though, they do have two things that I really felt like they needed. One is a way to deal with the Void, and two is some sort of hard save against the Tree Volley, which is the Shadow Demon. Chronosphere, they killed Whisper before. They are gonna be able to get back after Bash Nisha. What are these procs? Can the uh, Schofield actually save me? He does have the disruption. One of the Maledict procs is actually gonna be taken out, but he gets another Bash. Nisha, this guy, he just keeps on bullying poor Whisper, and the luck is on his side. Three levels of time lock, but <laughs> nice rotation from Schofield. <laughs> what I'd like to see is maybe even a rotation down towards that bottom lane with the Doom. Okay. Hector already has the Midas. Hector's game has been sick. Well, he's going to need to return back to lane. The Paralyzing Cast doesn't bounce and hit the uh, Life Stealer in time. Hector does manage to get up to that top lane and collect all that farm. It's like this small contingent of infamous fans that are just super hype, cheering them as they get into the booth. And I love that too, because it makes me kind of feel, because I know there are so many fans watching online right now, just cheering their hearts out for their team. This is the best that South America has ever done in a TI by a mile. Oh, I would I love to see a game three. We've casted so many infamous games that watching their journey and seeing how far they've been able to come, it's been uh, quite inspiring. But Secret, they're just mowing down towers right now. Mid one has made two different side lane rotations that have, in the end, resulted in towers falling. Now the team is going to join him in the mid lane, where Zai, with that early level of the Curse of Avernus, helps them chip away at it. And Infamous, just not really capable of fighting yet, because they've got a five position Tidehunter. So no Ravage up yet. He's going to have to wait until the Tome spawns. I think what they learned about last game, Dip in, they're gonna be able to pull back into the mid lane, trying to go for Puppy, but mid one with that Impus Rune may just be able to get the toss up, and Chris Luck, there's just not enough damage. Out from that toss combo with the max out tree throw. So Still he surprised that he decided to go for that though. Yeah. That's not an easy kill with the amount of farm and levels that you have. Uh, for Infamous, I think they're being punished. What Secret learned, I think, about the last game was that they don't really defend towers early on because they have two greedy side lane cores. Yeah. They've got Storm plus Life Stealer, um, and they've got Doom. It's hard for these heroes to fight without having to farm first. Oh, Chris Luck just blew so much of his mana mid one. Forced him to use that, and that's where Puppy strikes. He comes down from the high ground, catches him with the Paralyzing Cask, and Chris Luck does fall. And Chris Luck, and you love that cockiness from him. It's sort of what gives him his strength, but yeah. at the same time, it'll cost him his life. And it's costing him his net worth, too. He is second in CS, but he's down at sixth in network. Yeah, even behind the Absorb. Jump on Hector. He does have the rage, but they do have the black hole in return with the death ward. All that physical damage and the hole through that magic immunity is good enough to get the kill. That is the top net worth hero in the game, Fall. He absolutely did not expect to die like that. Now trying to chase down bottom lane, Zai. Holding on to a skill point here, ready to level borrow time when needed. Nisha's gonna show up, does have the Chronosphere, but he's gonna try and get Stinger without using that big team fight ability. Looks like he's got him too. These bashes are just always on time. Chris Luck over the mid is actually gonna be able to get the kill on a mid one as the rotation comes out. Now can he chase and down the Absor, the loser spray. Find him, he spots him, he has the mana, and he's gonna be able to pull him back. Whisper, don't need to use the Doom, my friend. Chris Luck is pulling all the heat right now. Nice, and that aggression finally pays off for him. This is what they need out of Chris Long. He needs to sort of go for that playstyle where he just doesn't care, runs in, tries to create space for Hector. This is what I meant by their one and two players have so much synergy. Radiant Hector already knows that he needs space. Chris Luck reads the same thing, says, I just have to go in. You can't play strong like a one position, which I think a lot of people like to, but in a game like this, you have to front face for your other course. And in some of the group stage matches, it was Whisper 
who had to take on that role of just fearlessly diving in with like his offlane tusk game. <laughs> that was the most suicidal tusk I've ever seen, but he was just constantly trying to create that space. Here in the playoff games, it seems like they've been giving Whisper a little bit more scaling, a little bit better situations. And it's uh, Chris Luck who's had to do all the diving. Stinger is going to throw out the Ravage. Does manage to nail three, but he will fall into the Maledict here. Trying to execute Puppy with the Body Shield plus Mist Coil. That's too much heal. And all of that, Chris Luck trying to dive away with the Crow's Sphere. Does manage to catch him. They do have the Disruption, though. But how much mana he doesn't have. He does have 11 Magic Wand Charge. He's going to pop that now. One jump away, but he does have the Maledict on him. The Cast is going to bring it forward. He it, bounces over to Whisper as well, stunning him. And Chris Luck falls. Now the toss back in design. Trying to get that silence up onto Whisper, who's slowed down so much. His face boots and drums just will not get him out of this hell that Secret has created in the mid lane. And that tier two tower already gone. Secret taking advantage of the fact that Infamous, they want to push this potentially slower pace not really allowing them to just set up arm. And this is the fastest we've seen somebody try to play against Infamous. We talked about how Secret likes to go for the high ground, but... It's kind of crazy that, defense. that they're doing it with um, slow heroes, too. Enigma, a Faceless Void, this, uh, this Abaddon is another one. He usually just likes to sit and lay, but they're just grouping up early. I think partially what it is is because uh, Infamous's three cores are even greedier in a way. Yeah. And they can't do, they have no answer right now for this Enigma with Mac. What Infamous needs to do is push out the side lanes pretty aggressively, start cutting waves. You can't allow Secret to just set up around your towers. Because Secret is just systematically one by one, tower by tower, running you down. You need another 60 seconds for the Ravage from Stinger. But honestly, there's just no more objectives to hold anymore. Just that bottom tier two is the only remaining outer tower for Infamous and 14 minutes in the game. As a result, Team Secret have a 3,000 net worth lead. Stinger's gonna be gone on, paralyzing Cask, and he TP away, gets out of vision of the Death Ward, but he's in trouble. He's not gonna go for the TP out. He's gonna try to swim his way out. That's a Blink Dagger now for Midwan after being a part of that kill. You know, the interesting part is that Lifestealer still has the highest net worth in the game, and Secret only have a 3,000 net worth lead. What this means is, if Infamous can actually win a fight and start taking some towers, all that team gold that they're going to get, that net worth uh, advantage that Secret has right now, it's going to change in a hurry. Yeah, I could definitely see Infamous still win team fights just because they have Ravage and Doom. If you line fights up and Secret gets too over aggressive, you will win team fights. Yeah. Uh, the only thing they've got to be careful about on the side of Infamous is waiting a little bit too long and allowing Secret to take too much of the map over because there will come a time where the net worth disadvantage is just a little bit too much and they've got too many items. So yeah. Infamous, I really like what they're doing. They're trying to make the best of a situation. Hector's still getting farmed, but you have to look for a fight at some point. They're going to give up that last tower. Zai takes it cleanly with Midwan having his back, and they're all just sitting in the jungle right now waiting for their smoke opportunity. Yeah, they here we have go. Ravage. This is something that they need to do. Uh, just because you like fighting or farming doesn't mean you can entirely avoid the concept of fighting. You eventually have to make some sort of play around the map, and that's why they're all gathered up around here. Hector, don't break the smoke real aggressive on the move. tier two. They're going to go wrap all the way around. The is going to get spotted now. Should be slowed down. The, oh, the three men on the black hole. He, they need a disruption, but they know. Oh, now the Chronosphere actually locking another three. Schofield, he's going to be caught here. Looks like he's going to be dying inside that Chronosphere. The Absor with the mech is actually still staying alive. They throw out the Ravage, but it doesn't actually hit Yabsor. Is he getting out of here? The Maltic being used. Hector has a rage up in one second's time, but now all of Secret is here, and they just got to use everything they have to be able to retreat. Singer's going to get caught inside the trees. Hector trying to get away, finally blows that. Ravage to be able to dodge the avalanche back over to Singer, who's going to fall. They just did not respect Yapsor's Enigma enough. They could have blown. They could have blown Doom. They could have used an earlier disruption. So many things could have been used there. Problematic uh, thing was that Schofield ran away from the fight, yeah. thinking they had him for sure. But he actually needed to be in position to disruption. If he's able to get that off, maybe that fight goes a lot cleaner. But it was the idea that he wanted to look for more after. Hector with his Hanamitis and Infest. This is a guy who has a different idea about life stealer. He's going to be using his Infest to farm like nine times out of ten. This when he's not using it to farm, he's probably using it in team fights as an escape mechanism, not as an initiation tool. Yeah, this guy is going to use this 
to never team fight. The way he's going to come back into this game is to use it to farm even more. And that's why Secret are going to take advantage of that. They know that they know what Hector's about. They're going to yep. go in for the Roshan. And it's in fact going to be Infamous that now has to potentially learn how to hold high ground at this early state. They've been aggressive Whisper. so far. He's just going to try and go in with a Scorched Earth. Chris Lack holding around. Mid one makes his jump in, though. It's going to be able to catch the Doom. Doom survives. Whisper can get off a of Doom somewhere here, and he uses it on to Nisha. But Nisha's plenty healthy, especially with the Phonic Shield on him. But Singer's here. No Ravage, but they will manage to execute. Yeah, the Clap for Rose. They're going to jump back in. The Clap for Rose on the Phonic Shield. Can they finish off Nisha? They need a little bit more of the double damage. The final hit, he gets him. Whisper finishes him off. Now Singer trying to hide from the Death Ward. But everyone from Infamous has thrown their lives into this fight to slow down Team Secret. It's gonna cost them four here. Schofield will take a little time, but eventually he does fall to Zai. That entire time, Hector was farming. He is so close to his Radiance, but Roshan is so close to dying in Team Secret. Look at this, they know that he's used the Rage to farm Whisper in this area mid one, looking for more, but they're gonna run into Whisper first. He's there to help guide Hector. The Radiance is on its way. They're so close to being really strong right now. If they could just stall out Secret for a little longer. This would be sick if they could get the Aegis themselves. It's so low, just at about 2,000 HP. Infamous should know about this. They walked into the pit to see it. That's why Secret is still holding this area, but they don't have the Black Hole. They the Ravage, but he needs to be able to get it off. Stinger, he will be able to get away from that initiation from mid one into the back line. Oh, the Chrono Sphere doesn't jump far enough. Chris Luck. Saved by the disruption, though. He'll be okay. Stinger limps away at just a little bit of HP. Mid one. He's going to be gone off by Hector, being burned out by the Radiance. And now on the high ground, Chris Luck is ready to make his reinitiation with Whisper. Sandwiching him from behind. This There's so much for Infamous. Over time. Infamous. Can they actually win this one? The buybacks are coming in. Can they finish off these heroes before the paralyzing cast? Chris Luck jumps away again. He managed to get back, but they hold. They don't want to go into the tier ones. They don't get too ahead of themselves. They know they forced so many buybacks out of secret. They need to play a little bit scared. They're going to leave Skull Field behind here. Infamous. For Roshan, the bigger goal right now. They know they're going to have the Black Roshan. But can they actually get inside the pit? They've used so many abilities. Mid one chasing them away. Is Chris Luck going to do it? He's, He's going to guess. Try and jump in. Three, two, one. Empty oh. slot. Nope, can't get it. He's going to try and jump in at last second. Jumps into the high ground using all of his mana, but Stinger will be caught here. Infamous. They managed to force so many buybacks out of that, but in the end, Secret was so strong with those buybacks that they guaranteed Roche. That was not bad at all, though, from Infamous. No. They've demonstrated they can win team fights, especially when Secret, they don't have that black hole as a threat. And if you're put in a position where you have to solo Chrono the Storm Spirit, it makes it really easy for Schofield to get the save. Mid one did have to use the buyback. And Infamous only down 2k gold now. Their heroes are tanky, yep. not easy to lock down, and you can see the seeds of how they can potentially win team fights. Oh yeah, I mean that fight was so close to really breaking secret, and we talked about how if they do get broken, we're gonna get Roshan for Infamous, we're gonna turn that into towers, and all of a sudden, all this net worth that still is on the map, all these towers just represent little piggy banks that can be cracked open and giving gold to Infamous. That net worth is gonna slide in their favor, and very rapidly, they could take full control of the game. What an interesting meta where everyone just saves their buyback now. Even yeah. cores, uh, because they know they're about to take that fight. Instead of buying out your Ogre Axe or anything like that, uh, you know, they're just going to hold on, wait in case they take a fight. Looking at Chris Luck right now, but Schofield's not too <laughs> far away. They're trying to bait him. I mean, Infamous's position in that team fight was perfect. The way that they were able to corral and wrap around. Oh, you got yeah. Chris Luck on the high ground, uh, two people marching in from the side. Zai gonna jump. Not sure how much they want to commit to this hero that has to borrow time in from behind. They're gonna go for Stinger, trying to force out the Ravage. They do manage to lock down him and Schofield, who's going for the disruption. The apps are threatening the black hole from the low ground. Disruption out, but Schofield's still dead. All the cores of Infamous will be able to get out, it seems, is mid one. Trying to chase him, has a blink up in a second, but I just don't think Avalanche and maybe a toss back. It's gonna be close, but Hector just making sure the mid one doesn't feel comfortable no, going for it. And we'll see what uh, Secret ends up doing here. In the previous game, they were so cautious about trying to siege into the high ground. They do Miss. have a very low siege wagon. They can finish that off rather easily. Looks like Secret can't go for it just yet. Yeah, and it looks like they're gonna hold strong to that idea that they have about Dota. Just back out, continue to try to control the map. Don't have to go high ground until you get wiped. Yeah. But with such elusive heroes like the Storm Spirit, it's hard to keep those side lanes pushed in. It's hard to deny that farm away from a hero like Storm. 
And I think they know he's forced a rotation. That's why Chris Lux is going to be able to TP down to bottom. Trying to finish off Puppy here. It's so close. The TP does not go nice off. Nice and fast. Good and fast range from Hector. Thank you. And he farms up yet again. This time it's a hero. That was one of those convenient things. Yeah. I, I think he was loath to use that infest there. Yeah. But it works. And now he is looking at an Assault Curas. Or maybe, oh, no, no, no. Sorry, Heaven's Halberd. He's already got the Sanj. That would really help against this Faceless Void, who represents uh, a lot of damage right now in these team fights because Nisha is so far with a whole Mjolnir. there. That's good damage right now, but Infamous don't have the best way to deal with this Abaddon core. Yeah. <laughs> See, the last time they tried to go for Zai, there was, Zai wasn't scared. Oh, He's got the borrowed time. They don't have any way to break him and silence him. And the illusions are so good in these positions. Yeah. Just chasing down poor old Schofield. Lits out a little frustration in the all chat wheel. Yeah. 22 to 10, approaching the 25 minute marker here. Secret still holding that 3,000 net worth lead they've had for most of the game. But this entire time, Hector, the big carry of Infamous, the one everybody's been talking about, he's been getting bigger and bigger. He's now got Radiance, Halberd, and he's sitting inside an Ancient Granite Golem. That's so hard for Secret to deal with right away. Nisha's gonna try and lay his physical damage into its Schofield. Breaks the smoke of Yapsor. Yapsor is gonna try and jump forward. Mid one does manage to find the initiation first. Schofield dies. Whisper is now gonna be chased down by Nisha. Singer positioning himself for the Ravage, ready to go. Holds on to it now. The Ravage actually not gonna go off as he gets Chronosphered up. But Singer's also simultaneously not gonna die to last second. He finally gets it off, controlling up some heroes. Yes, but there is no fight to be had for Infamous. Yeah, you saw the creep come in for a second, and then he just backs out completely. Hector sees that this is a sinking ship. Oh, Chris left the line. instant. Glyph goes down, he tried to cut the creep wave. He does have a haste rune, so he's making the most of it. He has to make this sort of play. I really like it, it's gutsy. But they're so far behind and they can't take fights right now. And that's the scary part for them. Yeah. They just don't have to team fight at this point. So Chris Luck, you've gotta buy time for the rest of your team. I almost wish that Singer had held the Ravage. Because that fight it was very clearly over. Yes. He like the Chronosphere being used, if he's still on Ravage right now, Infamous could be the ones playing on the offensive. Yeah, but by using the Ravage in that position, it makes it so you have to wait again. Yeah. And that's twice that that's happened, where Stinger uses that Ravage reflexively, thinking that there's a team fight. Uh, and it ends any sort of uh counterplay that Infamous can make. Because right now, it should be Infamous. No Aegis. You would have Ravage and Doom up. You could get aggressive without Chronos. But instead, it's Secret who aren't going to hold control of this game. Trying to hunt down Chris Luck, who's going to pop out. Mid one spots him, Avalanche, but Chris Luck's faster. Does manage to get the jump away. Even if he's caught by the toss, he can still make a long enough jump. Yeah, so almost intercepted him. Good thing that Chris Luck had the read to run into the trees with that ball lightning. Rather than down the lane and try and like farm up some, some, uh, some creeps or something. Look at this. Secret immediately moving into the mid lane. They're going to be able to catch Whisper. Toss him straight up in the air and send it back to the supports. Whisper does have the Crimson Guard. He's super tanky here, but the Maledict's making him so much squishier, and he's going to take out. Now, the Black Hole being used on the Hector immediately canceled, though, as a good disruption from the side. Got to go field his life, but at least he's able to get Hector out of that engagement. That's perfectly fine. Now you've traded the Shadow Demon for the cooldown of the Black Hole. That'll be worth it, and it coincides with the time that Ravage is going to come back up. Because Whisper didn't use Doom, he'll have that. Yeah. And this is the time I feel like you have to fight if you're infamous. Now that there's no black hole, yes, there is Chrono, but you'll have Doom, you'll have Ravage. Uh, Hector, I, I guess you could wait for his AC, but timing-wise, it feels like this is one of the better times that they could fight. Uh, plus, they have a DD on their Storm. Let's see if they're able to make the hold here. The BKB is coming in for the Faceless Void. Nisha has it now, so... Very important that Whisper does manage to get the Doom off on him or maybe Yapsor. But Yapsor doesn't have the black hole, so I suppose he doesn't really make up much of a threat. No, not quite yet. But Secret continuing that philosophy of gaining enough ground, not going high ground, just trying to control the map. The Assault Curas. That is not that far away for Hector. 
And he's willing to buy out. You were talking about how uh, it's interesting this meta, so many of these teams are willing to, to hold buybacks for the opportunity to win a team fight. Yeah. Infamous is like one of the few teams that doesn't seem to do that. Even in late game, they just seem to buy out all the time. It's what a, uh, it's so endearing. Like that they're just willing to sort of treat it like a pub. Yeah. Uh, that's sort of what made them like my favorite team so far at this TI. Because they just do things that no other team really does. Like where Hector refuses to use Invest to hop into any of his teammates to take fights. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it just yeah, reminds yeah. you of like some core in your pub game. Like you're pinging him and out of spite, he's using it to uh, pop out of creeps. Okay, so he's got Heaven's Halberd and the Evasion Talent now on the Lifestealer. He just got seriously strong, but Infamous cannot afford any more pickoffs, and Stinger is going to run red long into mid one. Tossed up in the air. It is still your five position. Even if it's Tidehunter, it's still your five position. This is space where Hector immediately TPs up to the top lane because he just saw some everyone on the right-hand side of the map. That's the funniest part about uh, Infamous, is they're more than willing to trade their supports for farm. Yeah. That is the real trap card uh, that Infamous will always play. You might have caught Stinger, but now Hector's farmed 18 more creeps. He has. And that's something that I wish people appreciated more, and I should probably push too, is that the supports do die for him. It's not like Hector gets the space out of nowhere. It is his supports, it is Chris Luck trying to make space for him, pushing out the waves very aggressively so that he can find the space to hit neutrals where he knows uh, Secret is four-man clumping. Yeah, just watch what Chris Luck's gonna do here. And Secret, they've been reading this timing pretty well. He's gonna try and hit the tower and he immediately gets cocked by the Chrono oh, Sphere. Like he really did. What would you call it, a prize fighter? Being able to read the movements? Yeah, this is Secret exactly is Secret. really determining the rhythm now of Infamous. I mean, just being able to have a defensive ward like that near your mid tower where you're controlling all of the map, that says a lot about how much they know about Infamous and the way they move around, the respect they have for those plays. Soul Catcher makes mid one a little squishy here. He that backs away such a good fight. Glimmer Cave. If he was able to grab that uh, sentry down a little bit quicker, maybe they get the purge on the mid one and they can grab that kill. Secret, finally gonna go for the high ground push here, but there is a buyback on the Storm Spirit. So if Infamous can find the right kind of opening here. Hector, open wounds. With that AC, it is so hard for them to actually challenge him, especially with his hold catcher. They don't feel comfortable fighting. And uh, not finishing that tier three, so they may go back for it here. This only needs one or two hits, but that'll be 15 seconds left on the Storm Spirit. Yeah, we'll see if Secret are correct in going for this high ground. So far in this tournament, they've been so low to do it, but they got grab it. the tower. But are they going to get punished for it, Hector? It's not going to go forward. Tier three. Oh, I, I, I like this a lot. Look at this. So this fast smoke. Secret may try and hit a shrine or something on their way out. One time for the boys. Hector, get into Chris Luck. He will not. Oh, if he uses this to farm, Hector, don't do it. You know he's doing it. Man, he's so strong right now with the AC, too. Yeah, but he has to be dealing some damage at some point. They need this net worth to the lead to impact. Yeah. About to... All right. <laughs> he's going to infest for those newts. He kills for the that dragon. I'm in for it. And with that, he will be the first to cross over the 20,000 net worth line. He just doesn't seem to be scared of Nisha at all. Not scared of a Chronosphere, all these evasion talents and uh, items. I honestly love it. I'm gonna start doing this in my games. No, please don't. You're, you're not you're not Hector. I'm not Blitz. Hector? You're not Hector. Hector's good enough to do this. It just changes everything I know about Storm Lifestealer. Yeah, dude. That's really what it does. It just messes with my head. It's Wait. like uh, Hector's got this flow chart in his head. So yeah. Anytime I'm not farming, I'm not gaining gold. And anytime I'm trying to go for a gank, that's 30 seconds that I'm not getting farm. It's like, their creeps on the map, farm. Their heroes on the map, yeah. avoid them and farm. And secret, they, they very clearly read the way the hell. Oh, Schofield, he's dead. The smoke off from Secret's gonna find the opening on the four position. Another hero that does have buyback, though. And Chris Luck is already in a position to be able to split push. Yeah, maybe this forces them back, but not without taking Roche first. And if Schofield buys back in this position, this would alert Secret to the fact that there is going to be a 5-on-5. Five five. But I don't know if you can give up this Aegis and Cheese if you're infamous. That's going to be another, like, so six to eight minutes of just waiting. Thinking about running into the pit, but it's too late. It's already dead. Hector actually coming in from behind here, trying to catch one of the supports. 
pops the link pins on a Yapsor. He's got to be careful. They have so many different ways to break and for now this. now with no range, he's going to be in serious trouble. He needs to be able to get in a fast target. Here comes the Star Spear, but no, he dies. He's controlled up. And the cast bounces on him. Spear does manage to catch Stinger. They do manage to get Chris Luck out of there, but this is a disaster for Infamous. The toss forward of the Enigma to make sure that Whisper knock it out alive. Three dead on Infamous after a successful Roshan for Secret, and now's the time to break the high ground. Didn't even have to use the Black Folder. Yapsor was able to hold it, and with three dead, Secret finally feel the relief. Are able to go high ground. And that'll be at least one lane of Barracks. We'll see if Hector's gonna buy back. Storm is here. I have a feeling Infamous just has this read that Secrets, they can't actually beat them in a fight right now. So better just to not use this net worth. Uh, they're going to find the opening here on a Schofield. Disruption. Time dilation slowing down Schofield as well. Now he's going to buy back with Ravage going down on somebody here. But instantly, look at that borrowed time. And the black hole! It's perfect! Locking down the two cores! Hector as well as Chris Luck about to fall inside that black hole. And that's just it. Infamous. They're going to fall here as Zai combined with Yapsor, the borrowed time into a Phonic Shield and the, the Black Hole immediately afterwards catching everybody. Infamous, they played one hell of They're a tournament. They're just dancing with each other. <laughs> <laughs> but it's looking like Secret. They're just going to go for the Tier 4s here. So much time left on Infamous that it just seems impossible. Whisper. He's hoping he'll lure them into the fountain if possible, dropping some items, dancing around them. What a fun team to watch. What a charming team to watch. But sadly, till the end, they'll do this. Till the bitter end, they will drop their items, do their taunts, drop their sprays. <laughs> Going for Puppy. Oh, no, the Lincolns. And that's it, GG is called Team Secret will 2-0 Infamous. The Cinderella story will end here against the DPC champs. And that was Secret just hard reading them all around the map. They did such a good job of finally figuring out the timing of Infamous. So many other teams failed at doing so. Yeah. I mean, we heard Sunbeat. They said that they really respected Infamous. They were knocking a lot of teams out of the tournament. You could see it in their play as well. The way that they prepped, studying Infamous. They knew exactly how Hector was going to be playing that Life Stealer. Had a plan to combat it as much as possible, taking those early towers, pushing the tempo of the game. Because they knew that Infamous is a dangerous team if they get in their element. Let me say, now that they're out of the tournament, they were my favorite team to watch. Yeah. Easily. Me and Cap actually requested this game because we wanted to see if they could do it. Unfortunately, they weren't able to, but... And I feel like there's nothing for them to be ashamed of. Getting yeah. top eight, you outlasted half the field. This was incredible. This was one of the coolest stories that I've ever seen at a TI. Indeed. Oh, I love this team. I hope they get to stick together. Hold your heads high, Infamous. You've done a great job here at the International, but it's secret. It moves on, and as we move on to the panel. I, I think it's very easy to see why Will is using such high praise for the team as they do 